you know, thanks for what you do with your podcast and all the rest. Uh, you're doing a great job. Hope everybody keeps tuning in. You get a lot of good info, a lot of insights, understandings of how to get strong, how to stay strong, how to use your strength. You do a great job, dude. <laughs> you make things better than they are in real life, I think. If you don't follow Massonomics, y'all do it. Social media, uh, website, everything. Massonomics. Yeah. Welcome, everyone, for episode 384 of the Massonomics podcast, the lifting podcast about nothing recorded live from western, northeast, South Dakota, and eastern, southeast, South Dakota. My name is Tanner, of and, course. And my name is Tommy, of course. Of course. Of course. Just of like course. usual. If no you were hoping there. for someone different for ep- for the 384th episode, you're, you've come to the wrong sad, place. Mis- yeah, you're going to be sad. So you got to stick with us again. We do have an exciting, uh, exciting episode here. We've got uh, Big Jimmy Kolb coming on later this episode to talk about his enormous fourteen hundred pound uh, bench that he just did here. So it'll be fun to talk about that uh, after it just happened here a week or two ago. And then um, we're going to support some of our supporting members before that. We're going to get into a fan submitted can before that. And I don't know, Tommy. We're just we got a we got a big trip coming up that we finally got booked here too. So we got to talk about a yeah, we got travel plans, excursion, flights, yeah. cars, planes, trains, yeah. automobiles, <laughs> just like the movie, just like it. But before we get into the, any of that, I want to tell you about uh, a company that sponsors the show, the Strength Co. Uh, the, the Strength Co. makes uh, all the plates that we fill up Massonomics Gym with. We call them the go-to plates of Massonomics Gym. They're made in America. By uh, our buddy Big Grant, formerly South, uh, formerly out of Southern California, now back in South Carolina, uh, but Big Grant does make the go-to plates our favorite favorite plates. They're smooth but easy to grip, rugged, durable, a nice black e coat finish that lasts. It uh, it they show very minor wear even after getting put through the ringer in our gym for a couple of years. We used them in the warm up room at the Lift Hardly VZ Classic. They went through all that and also now. Uh, we did have our Massonomics Limited Edition Strength Co. collars. Those are all gone. You can't get those anymore. But the Strength Co. came out with some new black uh, laser engraved ones. They're like our red Massonomics, only the Strength Co. black version. So check those out on their website, thestrength.co. And today's shoe is also brought show. Shoe. I'm getting ahead of myself, Tanner. Today's <laughs> yeah, show. Talk about shoe and too. actually, kind of today's shoe, too, is brought yeah. to you by Barefoot Shoes and the Ursonomics. The Ursonomics is genetic splicing of suede and canvas, something that's never been seen by the lifting world before. It combines strength, durability, and comfort of suede leather with lightweight and breathable canvas for a shoe that sits at the top of the food chain. Its wide, flat physique offers a stable podium for your powerful paws, while its flexible nature promotes a gait as natural as a bear prowling through western northeast South Dakota. Whether you're establishing dominance in the cage, the squat cage, or your favorite watering hole. The sneaker lets everyone know you lift hard and live easy. Now, here's the important part. Reserve your pair of the Ursonomics now at barefoot.store. There's only 250 pairs total of this shoe available across all sizes. So you want to make sure you get on that list, get your order in before your size goes out of stock because once these are gone, they are gone. And we're going to make the deal a little sweeter here, too. And that's if you use code MASS, code M-A-S-S, you can get a free pair of Barefoot Awesome Wraps. And so add the Awesome Wraps to your cart, use code MASS, and you will get those for free when you go to buy the shoes. And in case you're wondering what makes them awesome, it's because they go around your ankle, wrist, or elbow for added supports during your heaviest lifts. And I have a pair of Awesome Wraps right here, Tanner. And I got to be honest, these are a little different than the typical wrap that I'm used to. It's a much more uh, flexible, longer wrap. I, I usually use the the shorter wraps. So with the... Uh, Is that a 36? It's a 36 inch yeah, wrap? Yeah, I think it's a 36, I yeah. believe. If not, it's very, very close to that. But it's, yeah. a, it's a little lighter and, and stretchier wrap, so you can really dial in that tension and the stiffness as much as you want. So you get a free pair of those. Use code MASS, add them to your cart. But... Most importantly, though, make sure you go to Barefoot Shoes. Check out the Ursonomics. Uh, if you listen to last week's episode, we told you a little bit behind the scenes of the design process, but we're really proud of the way it turned out, uh, and we're really excited for these things to get out there and for people to start wearing them. So check it out at www.barefoot.store. 
dot store. I'd like to tell you more about those awesome wraps too, but mine haven't showed up yet. So what the hell do I know about them? Oh well, yeah, those ones. Yeah, I, I took your pair. Yeah. I got two pairs of them, Tanner. <laughs> oh shit, that makes sense. I guess that's why I have five pairs of these. Yeah, you, you just you get the shoes and the two dollar <laughs> bills. I get wraps. It's a fair trade off. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Ersonomics, you said 250 pairs. Well, it's less than that because they're for sale now and uh, they're moving. So especially if you're on, uh, if you're a size 14, 15, 16 shoe kind of guy (laughs) and you wait around, you're going to, there is, there are some available Mm -hmm. up to 16, but not very many. So if you're, uh, yeah, if you're 6'6", 350 and wear size 15, don't wait around. Don't message in a month and ask where your size is. Yep, got to take advantage of that. Yeah. Uh, should we, well, let's see. We we talked about the shoe. Maybe we talk about that a little bit more later, but I guess we did, we really did cover the shoe pretty good of what mm-hmm. we got going on here. I think so. Um, I have, we don't have our size actually of this. This was kind of like the original uh, test run, so I haven't been able to wear these yet, but I am excited. I'm going to, I don't know if I'll ever take them off once they come in. Just sleep in them. Yeah. Should we jump into this can? Because I'm thirsty. Yeah. So so we got we each got something different. This was a submission from Big Jen when when she was here for the powerlifting meet uh, a couple weekends ago it was now. She dropped these off for us. And she gave us each something different. She like hand picked mm-hmm. the selection for each of us. Um and she she let us know that that like these were these were special for each of us. So mine is Peace Tree Brewing Co. Is yours a Peace Tree Mine peace is also tree a co? Peace Tree Brewing Co. Okay. Peace, right? Oh, sorry. Peace Tree. Oh, man. Yeah. That's what I get yeah. for not really reading correctly. And mine's a Blonde Fatale Belgian style blonde ale. Mm. 8.5% Whoa, alcohol for by real? volume. Yeah. Damn. Is yours that much? No. because And I have a hazy India Pale Ale, which if you listen to the show, you know I like those. Mine's only a 6%, a blonde ale at 8%. I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, eight and a half. And I had to look. Uh, it says it's rooted in Knoxville, Iowa. I had to look where Knoxville, okay. Iowa is. Tanner, any guesses? I have no idea. I'll say uh, east, northeast. Mm, you're wrong. Iowa. It is okay. southeast of Des Moines, which Des Moines is okay. kind of in the middle. So Yeah, okay. So this is from Big Jen. Big get strong, Jen. Here we go. It looks like uh, Knoxville, Iowa has the Ooh. National Sprint Car Hall of Fame. In case you're into sprint cars, I've never seen sprint cars in action in, only on the television before. Me too. Mm. This is <laughs> is that a robust this packs, beverage? Yeah, this pa- this does pack a wallop. I will say my uh, get a little hazy IPA. Is exactly how I'd expect a good old I, hazy IPA to be. Pretty mellow, good. This is the stiffest, uh, the stiffest blonde, blonde, blonde you've ever up. met. Yeah, <laughs> and I've met some <laughs> stiff ones in my day, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Ooh, that's it. It tastes good. It is. It is a strong beer, though. Surprisingly um, strong. It's good. What do you give yours mm. on the? JD and I'm only debating so between three and a half and four. It's almost too mellow. It's so smooth. It's almost like I, I'm almost looking for more. But I, that could be a good thing, though. On the right day, you're like, no, I want that to just be perfectly mellow right. and smooth. Right. Mm, four is pretty exclusive territory. We discussed this last week. I'll go three and a half. Yeah. But I'd gladly drink this again and again. I'll give mine a three. <laughs> It's not, the, it doesn't, the 8% it doesn't offend me, but it's not the, yeah, yeah, it's a little bit stronger than what I look for in a, in a brewski. It's understandable. Uh, Tanner, yeah. today I went and ate at a restaurant and I'm very curious if you've ever been to this restaurant before and it Red is Robin. called, not called Red Robin. I, I don't okay. think those exist around here. That's right. Uh, or, or anywhere, anywhere for, for that, that matter. Yeah. yeah. Um, have you ever gone to Who Hot before? Yeah, yeah. Because you like said Hoo no, Hot really had surprised me. 
Yeah, it seems like Who Hot really had a, a strong run there like 10 to 15 years ago. Dude, and I, I totally... feel like I haven't heard anyone say that name. I forgot the, that, that, the existence of that. I uh, totally agree with you. Everything you're saying right there, I, I don't think you're wrong at all. If that's a Mongolian grill, right? Mm-hmm. And it's where you, you tell them... Yeah, I want the beef. I want yeah, you the... Kinda, you kind of yeah. collect your grill. own stir-fry items and right. then give it to the guys and they cook it in front of you. Yeah. Um, I'm not... I have not been there in a, like 15 years. But now that I think about it, it wouldn't be bad because you just say, yeah, I want beef. I want... Oh, you don't even say I want it. You, say you I get want... your own. You you make your okay. own serving right, as much right. as you want. Yeah. yeah. Right. And what do you throw on there? Like broccoli and is there rice and stuff? Or? Uh, so yeah, first you pick like there's like different types of noodles and then yeah, okay, and, I'm remembering. And they give you rice too, so you pick your noodles yeah. and then you pick your proteins. So you, you have you just give it to them and they cook it. Yeah, up. so you yeah. get a bowl of just you do a bowl just full of your your meat. So your meat you have like chicken, beef, like meatballs, crab, scallops, mussels. I mean, there's like yeah, ten choices of your protein, and then there's like the veggie line with. You know, everything, peppers, beans, onions, all that stuff, broccoli, anything you'd expect to see in Asian foods. Yeah. And then, so that's the second line. And then the third line is all the sauces. And that's where you really bring the flavor. You know, you right. pour in all the sauces Take on. Get to Flavor Town. Yeah. And I am, I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm pretty sure the last time I was there was over 10 years ago. And my wife just always brings it up and I'm, like not usually in the middle of the day in the mood for a huge buffet, you know, cause it's a buffet. It's all you can eat. So I can't go there and like not go hard. And, uh, today was just that, that right day. And it was pretty damn good. Like it's, it's the thing with those things is because you're making your own, it's kind of on you to decide how good it's going right. to be. And when you're experimenting with the sauces, it leaves a lot of, I would still prefer someone to make my food for me. Like, no, these are the sauce. This is the sauce proportions. You need to make it good. Right. But I was, I was still, uh, for like thirteen dollars, all you could eat. I'm like, yeah, that was that was totally worth it. I, I walked away feeling pretty good. But I was just very curious if you had ever experienced too hot before. Um, yeah, I have, and you know, like it. It all seems good in practice or in in theory to me. But as I'm thinking about it, the the thing I notice, like I always tend to lean towards the beef as my protein source when mm-hmm. I go to something like that. And it feels like, I don't know what the cut of beef that is that they're using, but it always is so damn tough. Or am I misremembering that? <laughs> um, so that's like, kind of what like I was worried about. I feel like the beef just looks tough when that's I look I at it they cut this. They cut it so thin that by the time they okay. cook it, by the time they cook it, it gets feeling pretty crispy. Actually, um, I did just have to look here. David said, if you walked away feeling good from an all you can eat buffet, you did it wrong. It's actually just dawned on me right now. We didn't go there. We had a crazy day, so we didn't go there till three. And I'm just realizing right now I'd never ate dinner tonight. So, I mean, I was, I was incredibly full. Like I didn't feel uh, completely normal than when I went, but, or when, when I got done, but yeah, the, the beef was better than I thought it would be. I thought it turned out fairly decent because yeah, you can get those pieces that are a little thick and then they get like rubbery yeah. or weird. I was, I was fairly happy with it. Yeah. Big Keith in the discord, he said, bad chicken is better than bad beef. Mm, I don't know. It's tough. Almost any, know. almost any beef is better than chicken in my opinion. Yeah. Usually that's true. Okay, so <laughs> I I'd be cur- I would actually like to have it again. To tell yeah. you the truth, I would like to tr- I would like to try that again. Also, there I had to check to see what their uh, locations were. Mostly Midwest and Mountain region, which surprised me a little bit. Okay. Um, uh, I wanted to. I've got a topic about quarterbacks in here. <laughs> All so right. Do you know what that is? Do you know I've, what I'm talking about? I've heard there? of this position before. Yeah, we're talking football here. I think, uh, I don't know if the actual word should be quarterback or quarterback, because I don't know if it really has an S on it, but talking about the uh, Netflix documentary. Oh, I did see that. Who, okay, did was you, it? Did you see it or? No, I just saw, you, you I, see I, that I it saw that it existed. Is it Mahomes, Cousins, and? Oh, the guy that played for the Falcons that got drafted by the Titans, uh, Mar- Marcus Mariota. Ah, uh, okay. I mean, he gets like benched halfway through the season so they kind of quit following him <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. Uh, maybe not the best person I, to follow in hindsight <laughs> and i don't need to talk about the whole show but what i want to talk about is uh the training that they show in there mm. the lifting yes. that <laughs> uh people need to if you if you haven't uh if you haven't checked this show out you know watch it and pay special attention to the to the gym time that they show yeah i would just say it is a really it is a good show i like 
watching that much more than I like watching an NFL football game. To tell you the honest truth, that's way more interesting than uh, watching just. Oh, an there average, wasn't a commercial uh, break every thirty seconds. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's probably most Dude, of that, it. Like that is, actually, I think we've talked about this before, yeah. but that is. That is like what ruins football is the yes. number of breaks is absolutely <laughs> insane. And it might yeah. be even worse when you're in person because then you realize the TV timeouts and all that shit. There's just nothing going on ever. Like it just right. kills the pace of a game. Actually, I remember I went to that ASU game. I, I, I think I complained about that last November. I got back and I said, everyone that was with us is huge football fans. Even my father-in-law, he ref college football for years. And he was like, this is too much like this. This is insane. The number of breaks going on. This makes no sense. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, no, it's overall a good show. And you know how Netflix has been doing the different sports. Mm-hmm. Uh, like you talked about. Uh, Formula rate, One. The, golf, Formula One. Golf. Uh, tennis. And the rate. It's uh, made shit. Bikes. Sh- yeah. It's made shit take off. Uh, now, I think this documentary is really going to be what it takes to set, make is, football take off. Is football going to be big the, this fall? Yeah, say, yeah <laughs> I think, <laughs> think football is really going to take off now <laughs> that uh, they did this show on Netflix. It's finally going to get the respect it deserves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but I, my quick notes is, is Cousins is just as vanilla <laughs> Is <laughs> you think he is, if not yeah. even more so? A hundred percent. Like how? Like could, I'm like, wow, that guy. <laughs> yeah, you can't like you can't play your personality to be that vanilla unless you actually no. are. You know, that would no, be him and his. Him I and mean, his family. That's what that they would are. actually be the coolest thing ever if somehow he can pretend to be that vanilla, and then nope. all of a sudden you're like, oh no, this guy's just like going off, freaking out all the time when you actually get the behind the scenes. But yeah, that's not surprising at all. Yeah, that is not an act. And then. uh the most interesting part, like I said to me, was uh, Mahomes showing him training. So he's got his own uh, personal trainer, and the shit they have him doing is it the balance on one thing with yes. the Bosu ball and do yes. this, and because yes. because now granted because Patrick gets in weird positions, so he needs to know how to react from any. Is that's that <laughs> that's I'm like all this wild shit and all this weird, 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 wild, wacky uh, agility stuff, mm. and I'm like, you're not. You're not uh, improving Patrick Mahomes' agility with this drill. You're just, all you're doing is you have a a genetic freak right here Mm -hmm. in terms of speed, uh, agility, you know, mobility uh, in a number of ways. And all you're doing is just like putting it on display by putting them through these drills. Like, I don't think you're honing anything when you, when you put, when you make Patrick Mahomes do that stuff. I think you're just, you're just, you're getting to display someone that's just like, uh, well, a gift. And you also know? Like again, his, like, are you actually making him better? Like, are you doing the, are you actually training? Are you no. doing like dumb testing? You know, again, like it's, that's, it's, that's what I thought is, and granted you don't see the full picture. So I don't want to shit on the, you know, strength coach. They ask too much because not, I don't know, but just the bit that you see in the show, mm-hmm. it kind of looks bogus to me. And, you know, never once did he do just what you might consider a, a normal, barbell movement not that you have to there again i don't even know if you need to do that shit if you're patrick mahomes yeah. although maybe maybe if he's gonna waste the time doing something maybe if he did <laughs> that is maybe if, yeah at the end of the day like if you're gonna block out you know this many right. hours per week like wouldn't you just think like well, let's make it like as valuable as possible and and, and patrick mahomes doesn't need to be a power lifter yeah. of course but maybe if you even uh even if you, for whatever reason, maybe you don't want him to barbell back squat. Maybe you're having him do a goblet squat. Maybe I just feel like getting, bringing up just some of those basic strength numbers would be of more of an asset to him than, uh, you know, having him do these cone one legged leap hop bounding in and out stuff. In, I'm just in like, my very uneducated opinion, I'll be the first to admit that it just seems like a stronger quarterback would be a more resilient, like resistant to injury. Like that's their yeah. biggest concern. Once you're good, it's like once I people know you're so good, too. you just like don't want to get hurt. And you would think that doesn't just being stronger kind of not like you have to be insanely strong, like you were saying, but just being a little stronger. Doesn't that maybe make you a little more resistant to getting hurt when the 350 pound D lineman comes through and just destroys you? See, I would think so. Yeah, that's that would be my take <laughs> on it. That was my take. I mean, it, it seemed there again. There's I. I don't know everything about it. I don't know actually what they're doing, but just from the bit that I see on the show, I leave that thinking, what in the hell are you actually doing here? Like, I don't think yeah. you're progressing anything. I think you're just showing the talents of a really talented person. Yeah. And yeah, and at the end of the stuff. day, it's like, what does that actually make you better at? Like you set up this <laughs> right. one-time drill 
Like, does right. that actually make you better at anything? Or did you just do some crazy fitness competition one time? And you're like, okay, yeah, now that's, we, that's not repeatable. So we're not actually getting better at anything here. Right. Um, other notes. It is just, it is funny. This is true about ev- almost everyone. Uh, it's definitely true about most of these athletes, even though maybe, maybe there's a certain level of stardom where it's not true, but everyone, almost everyone at the end of the day is just a normal dude. Like just the, cause there is some pretty candid stuff about mm. this. And it's like, uh, you know, Marcus Mariota gets home from a game and it's like, they're having a kid and they need to work on putting the Ikea crib together. It's oh. a pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah, that's what we all are doing. And then it's like, um, Patrick Mahomes dogs are being pains in the asses and like jumping over the fence and he's out in the, like they're, they're interviewing his wife and he's in the back yelling and screaming at his dogs. And I'm like, yep. just, and just then just like their interactions with their buddies, you know, like on say Monday, you know, not other players, but their legitimate friends, just their, Friend their dudes Patrick. just, and I'm like, Oh, it's just literally like if you were sitting around with your buddies, the, Monday after a powerlifting meet and you're just kind of shooting the shit on it. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it is just funny how even maybe the most high level of star athlete is still just kind of dudes doing their thing. Yeah. I mean, that's what, that's what it is at the end of the day though, right? They're just playing a game and having fun, but getting paid a ton of money to do it. Yep. <laughs> living the, living, that's, I guess that's what they mean by living the dream. Although would say the strength training looked like shit to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I expected you to say that. I, I really wasn't expecting you to be yeah. like, you know what? I was really impressed with their training regimen. It was very, very good. Like that, that would have been a surprise if he said that. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. So that's quarterback. I, I would recommend give, if, if you're, if you're into football at all, you'll like it. Actually, maybe if you're not into football, you'll like no, it. No, I, I think that that's actually fair because I, my wife watched that with me and she would never watch a football game. Well, very rarely ever want to watch a football game. Um, but it was interesting to her. How about, cause it was, okay. How many episodes is it? Like four. Oh, is there, okay. it's like the that's, right amount of yes, episodes. Yes, where that's not, not bad like at 12. all. Then. I was going to yeah. say, how would you say it compares to hard knocks? Cause my wife also does not enjoy watching football. There was a couple of years where we watched Hard Knocks, and she liked watching that. We haven't done it the last couple of seasons now. Uh, it's way more comparable to Hard Knocks than it is a game. I think, uh, you know, if you say you have a wife doesn't like watching a football game but kind of likes Hard Knocks, I think this is even better than that. Okay. Because this has a lot of the wife's in it and stuff, too. Uh, it is really just like their And full... I suppose it really is just focused on, like, three guys where Hard Knocks can be right. focused on, like, ten different guys that are rookies right. while also trying to show the veterans. It's, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so that's quarterback. That was our quarterback okay. quarterback discussion for this for this episode. Uh, should we do a little uh, supporting our supporting members, or yeah, do or do we want to talk about our trip that we've got coming up? Maybe we should talk about the trip. Yeah, I'm too okay. We do have a big trip. We finally booked it, didn't we? It's been booked. So the trip is um, we're going to and- beautiful Ohio <laughs> <laughs> again. Yeah. One of the few places we, we just, go every year for Mass Nomics is the Ohio. Midwest and so much that even yeah. when we when we book trips, we go to the other side of the Midwest. <laughs> yeah, so we're uh, we go to Ho- Ohio every March, but that's not a, March. Just Once seemed too far enough. away. Yeah, we could. Yeah, so now we're going back to Ohio in the end of September. Very end of yes, September, yes, we're headed September, there. Yeah. We've got a few few sunny days of vacation in Ohio. We're also going to Michigan in that trip. Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. We're really crossing states yeah. here. We're touching down in Ohio. Do we do we want to give just some brief specifics yeah. on what we're doing? So yeah. we're going to touch that. This, this is the itinerary at the moment. Of course, things can always change. We hope they don't. But as of right now, the plan is we are going to touch down in Dayton, Ohio. Rent are a we flying into Dayton? Is that where we're going to end up? Um, Is it Dayton or Columbus? Actually, I can't remember now. We looked at It's one of those two. It's one of those two, yeah. We're going to, we're flying to either Dayton or Columbus, one of those two. We're going to get in a rental car. We're going to Elite FTS. We're going to record an episode. Yeah, yeah, in London, Ohio. We're going to be on Table Talk, which is pretty awesome. Do an episode of Table Talk. Yes, that should be really cool. Still not totally sure why. (laughs) Why? Out of all the people you could pick, we're going to be one of them on there. But it'll be a lot of fun. Also, they normally go for like three plus hours. I'm very curious yep. how long ours will go for. Well, and Dave did say something about wanting us to train in there a little bit. While oh, we're really? There too. So I don't, oh. I don't know exactly what uh, he didn't. Damn. 
he hasn't been a man of a lot of words on the whole thing, and I, so and I, you know, I haven't pressed it, pressed him on any of it too much. So, but we'll probably be at the compound for several hours. Yeah. But, well, I'm between just the recording podcast, the podcast, yeah, it's going to take a long time. That's going to take a half a day, damn near. <laughs> you know, well, we do our two hour thing takes like four hours to do. So, right, uh, right. I, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if we have five hours, four to five hours, just wrapped up into podcast time. So we'll yes. have that, and who knows what else? Of course, we'll be doing lots of video, travel vlogging, whatever we do, uh, so people can can follow along with us afterwards. But when we're done with that on... That night. Yes, okay, yeah. So we're flying in Friday, or we're getting up early Friday morning, hopping on the plane. Friday afternoon, we'll go do this podcast. Friday night when we're done, we're getting back in the car. We're driving way up north to Detroit Rock City. Yep, and <laughs> Detroit, Michigan. And then we're going to wake up Saturday morning and do some recording with Dr. Mike Isratel. And, and then we're will, going to Mike Isratel's compound. That will also uh, be very funny. <laughs> like <it's, laughs> that'll be an interesting experience. I don't, uh, uh, I don't know all the particulars yet about what we got going on there exactly yet either, but uh, no doubt it'll be fun, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Mike, he'll have the privilege of being... Will he be the first guest that's actually had three episodes to himself? Yeah, I suppose. Uh, well, I don't know if that's technically true or not. What about like Brad Neitzel? Has he been? Well, I'd say in the modern or? era. We're going to yeah, go modern, modern era. era here. Yeah. That's probably true then. It, yeah. You know, since episode like 200, it'd be the first three Pete. Well, we got some time to research that. We can, we can yeah. get into that one a little bit, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, and see, so yeah, we're going to record with him on Saturday. Hop right back on that plane. Come home Saturday night. It's going to be a crazy like, yeah. Like by the time we hours. finish, yeah, when we finish recording with him, we pretty much need to book it to the airport to mm-hmm. catch our flight to get back to South Dakota late that night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's, that's going to be. Or we got this mostly finalized last week, and so I was, I was very excited. I think it was when we were recording last week. We find out about all this, and I was very excited going into last week's podcast because we had all this stuff going on and. So yeah, the next few weeks, the next month, month and a half, it's prep time, Tanner. Yeah, but uh, we but we got everything booked, and that that part's uh, kind of a pain in the ass to make sure everything. Yeah, when uh, you're going out of different out of different airports and renting cars and all that, there's a lot of working with multiple schedules and looking at travel times, and there's several moving pieces there. Yes, there is. But stay tuned. We'll probably have more on that as we get a little closer here. Um, but we do not have almost any spare time in that trip. It is basically locked up from the moment we leave until the moment we get back. And we'll probably be pushing the boundaries on just about every way there. Yeah. You know, we could probably start recording our footage now and have Mike do one of those videos where he roasts us for our training routine. <laughs> <laughs> where he makes fun of all the Loser shit we do. Loser Midwesterns attempts to power yeah. lift. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> All right, now supporting our supporting members this week. So what is supporting our supporting members? It's a relatively new segment of the podcast. We've got the supporting members that help support the Massomics podcast. They have been for years. They choose to do that monetarily. They get some things in return. One of them is access to our exclusive Discord community full of uh, other like-minded individuals. That's one of the biggest perks, I'd say. You also get a discount code for our store, our merchandise. You also get early access when we drop new items in there, when we got new shorts, new shirts, new drink spotters, stuff like that, you get early access. And uh, you also get kind of a peek behind the curtain of what we got going on also. And then uh, in addition to that, every week we pick out a few few of you guys and gals in there that are doing stuff that we find noteworthy that uh, comes, across, comes across our desk and we put it on our list. It's not an inclusive list. We don't get, cover everything that went on in all of your lives over the last week, but we do hit a few of the highlights so this week, I would no, uh, mention that Big Paul Foss from Sioux Falls was the guest on this week's Unpaid and Underrated podcast. I listened to that. Paul did a great job, just like I would expect every good South Dakotan to do on a podcast. So That's right. It's the home team. Good job, Big Paul. Uh, Big Colton, another. This is like the Sioux Falls it is. Uh, episode. It's a growing Big Colton, contingency down here. Yeah, there is. It's the 
People, some people are maybe even saying that it's crew falls. Actually, I almost have to, I almost have to interrupt you for a second here, Tanner. I went to the, I never work out on the weekends. Just, it doesn't work very good with my schedule, but I did go work out on the weekend the last weekend. And I feel like I was a celebrity in the gym. The people coming up to me saying, are you the massonomics guy? It was like nonstop. And some of the people, one of the guys was from Aberdeen. Actually, two of the guys were from Aberdeen. They, they graduated. Anyone I know or? Um, they were, they're a lot younger. They graduated from high school. They're about okay. Grayson's age. But okay. Some of the guys from there, Damn another kids. another guy that just watches the podcast, another person that knew who I it was like crazy. You have to go on the weekend more often. Damn, like yeah, I feel like a celebrity in this gym right now. All these people coming up and talking to me. And then, um, uh, yesterday I went to the Sioux Empire Fair. I had my lift shirt on. I wasn't there yeah. three minutes, and some <laughs> some somebody came up to me, and she goes. You're one of the massonomics guys, right? And I said, "Yep, that's me." She's like, "Oh my gosh, what are you doing here?" And so I had to explain the whole story. And was she wearing a massonomic shirt? She was not. But uh, were any of these people wearing massonomic shirts? No, but all of them say the same thing. They're like, "Oh, I normally the one have day a I don't wear my shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Likely story. <laughs> yeah." Uh, did your wife get sick of it at all? Or I suppose um, a lot of that was at the gym. She's your wife just like, yeah, whatever. Okay. Yeah. Do your thing. <laughs> you think you're so cool. <laughs> yeah. With your fancy shirts Talking and your podcast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but speaking of crew falls people, so it is crew falls now. It's not mm-hmm. Sioux falls. It's crew falls. Uh, big Colton down there competed in a strongman competition. Sounded like he did well. Got second in the super heavyweight class. He ran down some of his events. Did a heavy hold, heavy farmers, heavy yoke, second place for Big Colton. Big Toby also competed in a strongman competition uh, this weekend. Is Big Toby from Arizona? That was, I think, maybe. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, Do you think it was Toby? Hot? I'm sure it was uh, at least 100, just like every, <laughs> they're showing, they've been show, sharing their weather reports in the oh, Discord. Every, and yeah, every, like everybody's been there. putting that on Instagram. Just everyone's weather report is 100 plus all yes. week. Yes. Uh, Big Toby got second overall in his master's class. Did well, of course. Uh, looked like he won the sandbag carry for distance event and did well on some others. And then I saw Big Jaunty in there. Big Jaunty Hollins, I think this is Big Jaunty. He competed. He had a 474 squat, a 297 bench, and a 575 deadlift. And that deadlift was a PR. Yeah. So great job, Big Jaunty. So congrats, all the crew, for all the crew stuff that everyone's had going on here. Good Thank work, you, crew. crew. Tommy, should we hit a couple uh, couple ads quick and then uh, get think, Big Jimmy? I think it's that time. Um, all right. Uh, want me to do one first? Yeah, Take I got it away, up for Tanner. Right here. All right. Only the second time you've heard this, but uh, so it's still pretty pretty new, pretty hot off the press. Coming straight from the Watertown, South Dakota press. Are you tired of supplements that just don't work? You take them, you wait a few minutes or maybe an hour or two and feel absolutely nothing. Most supplements are underdosed, contain fillers, cost-cutting compounds, and proprietary blends, which all just confuse an inconvenient truth. They just don't work. Well, maybe it's not your fault you keep bombing your PR attempts, have low energy in the gym, and can't gain lean muscle. Maybe your supplements simply suck. Well, our fellow South Dakotans at Build Fast Formula are making high-quality product formulas that contain clinically dosed, research-backed compounds with no unnecessary fillers so you can build towards your goals faster and finally feel a difference in the gym. Here's the best part. Massonomics listeners can snag their first order for 10% off at buildfastformula.com by using discount code Massonomics at checkout. And if you want to save even more, you upgrade that to a subscription. You save an additional 10%. So that way, with our code, you're actually getting 20% off. And that's buildfastformula.com. The link will also be in our show notes. Thank you, Build Fast Formula team. I do have to make note here, Tanner. I really enjoyed all of the the Vaso Blitz uh, memes in the (laughs) Discord. After (laughs) Duffin last week was... uh, Calling Vaso Blitz a, a boner uh, yeah, supplement. Vaso Blitz, Vaso Blitz. I can't even I'm not sure. You oh, say it, I actually don't know. I'm not sure. How you I say probably that. it's probably better if I say it wrong. I yeah, usually say yeah, it wrong. I'm so. not sure how you say it. But uh, what is it? What am I? What did I? I said Vaso. I don't, oh, I don't prob- know how you so said. So that's probably wrong. I don't know. I honestly don't know Vaso. Um, but yeah, the number of uh, <laughs> the number of memes about that were very hilarious. 
I, yeah. I enjoyed that. So if you if you want to know what that's about, listen to last week's episode with Chris Duffin and then join the Massonomics Discord and you too can laugh at inside Massonomics jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Today's episode is also brought to you by Texas Power Bars and the brand spanking new 29 millimeter Texas Power Bar. Uh, we have we have our own 29 millimeter Texas Power Bar in the gym, and that thing is turning heads and ripping hands left and right. People are loving it, yep. aren't they, Tanner? Yep, we did get the new 29 millimeter, and it is the real deal. Um, you know, like any Texas Power Bar, it has all the characteristics you could ever want in a bar. It's strong as a house with the best snarling, and it's maintenance-free. Hundreds of state, national, international, and world powerlifting records have been and continue to be set on the Texas Power Bar. If you'd like to learn more about Texas Power Bars and buy one of their legendary bars, including the new 29mm bar, then make sure to t- check out TexasPowerBars.com. Thank you, Texas Power Bars. All right. Should we boot everyone else out then and get yep. Big Jimmy on? They're out of here. I like uh, Big He shared on the Unpaid and Underrated podcast. They had a, a poll of <laughs> of our former guests on the podcast who can answer one question the longest. <laughs> yep. And the choices were either uh, John Anderson, uh, Chris Duffin, or Nitro from American Gladiators. Yep. <laughs> and yep. uh, I, if I had to, put who would honor- you vote? Well, if I had to put an honorable mention in there, can you think of anyone else that gave very long answers? Honestly, We're I not- think those are the three great choices right there. Those are three great choices. If I had to put an honorable mention in there, I would add. Um, um, why can't I think of his name? Strongman um, Travis Ortmeyer. No, uh, uh, Derek Poundstone. Oh, Derek Poundstone, yeah. He yeah, talked for yeah, quite a while, for a while, too. He, yeah. was, he was giving us all great information, but he gave some very <laughs> yeah. long responses, too. But John Anderson John Anderson is the right won, answer. and yes. he's the clear winner. He's the right answer. Oh, John uh, Anderson doesn't even need someone else on the other side of no, the he, phone call. He needs no, in, yeah, he needs no, uh, <laughs> co- he has no competition in that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Okay. Oh, Big Eddie put a picture of him. Uh, I see that. Jimmy in here. Yeah, that's good. Uh, Where was that at? Um, Probably at, like, doesn't Eddie do, like, Swiss and all that stuff? Oh, I bet it was at Swiss or something like that. Yeah. Got him. <laughs> awesome. Well, we'll just, if you're good to go, we'll just jump right in. We don't want to say, we don't want to re- ruin all our good stuff for when we're not recording. Let's do it. All right. All right, Big Jimmy, welcome to the podcast. We're excited to get you on, and uh, I do think it's uh, perfect timing. Obviously, you just uh, came off a new world record, the heaviest powerlifting lift of all time of any lift, any form of powerlifting. Is it 1,401 pounds? Is that the pounds conversion? That's the pounds conversion. That w- I wish it was 14 flats, a cooler number, but it was 1,401. <laughs> That's one of those rare circumstances you might actually want it to be one pound less instead of one pound more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> What's before, the... before they did the chips, it was going to be 1399 or 1405. I was like, oh, please chip it and do 1401. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what is what was that in kilos then? Three, uh, I'm sorry, 636 kilos or 635, one of the two. Okay. Yeah, is... So, and I guess, you know, for anyone anyone that doesn't know, I've, I assume a lot of people have seen it. Most people have probably at least seen it come across instagram or whatever it is you use you've seen it somewhere but is uh the heaviest heaviest lift ever but is a bench press the heaviest bench press of all time um and we'll get to get to more of that but i think like the first question i think this is you probably been asked this more times than you could ever count but i think it's still worth asking because it is just such a wild thing to think about everyone i think wants to know what does that feel like like holding 1400 pounds above yourself like that well, it, the, the answer surprises a lot of people and it sounds really stupid, but, uh, whatever, whatever your current heaviest max is, whatever <laughs> yeah. the number might be, how heavy that feels to you is how heavy 14 feels to me. Um, it's adaptation over time. I remember when my max was my first shirted max ever in a meet in 2008 was 550. And that felt like a Mack truck was on my body. Yeah. But over the course of 15 years competing in equipment, slow adaptation over time, it's just, you know, all the weights have felt same from six, seven, eight, nine thousand all the way up. Like, yes, they're heavier, but the adaptation with the bones and the CNS, I'm not saying it feels light. Don't get me wrong. Don't get it <laughs> twisted. Um, but it feels 
normal. So, okay. so if we were to say, and we're going to talk about this more later, but like you, we have, you have some amazing videos of rep work. So like when we see like eight, 900 pounds, given that that is a fair amount under your max, like that doesn't feel like bone crushingly hard when you're no. unracking 800, something like that. No, 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 no. Uh, I, I start feeling so in a typical warm up day or warm up routine for a big bench, big workout, I would go from seven or 800 pounds. My first actual like working set warm up weight would be like 1,050 to 1,100 pounds. It isn't really until I get over 12 where it actually starts to feel like, oh, okay, it's getting, it's getting serious, getting heavy. So eight, nine, 1,000, 1,100 is all kind of like, it's kind of like toy weight. Sounds, that's what I, that sounds that's, stupid. It, it no, it it makes sense because it's all relative in percentages. Really, honestly, like a percentage of fourteen hundred, you know, if my uh, if my max bench is is four fifty, you know, ten percent of that is forty five pounds. Well, ten percent of yours is one hundred and forty <laughs> pounds. You know, I mean, like it's just uh, uh, yeah. it's it's wild. But that's what I wondered. Like, so if you're warming up, does eight hundred feel? I'm just picking out numbers out of the sky, but does does nine hundred feel different than eight hundred to you, or do they kind of feel the same? Like, can you, if yeah. you if someone covered the weight with a trash bag, <laughs> and they said, "Is it? Do you think this is eight or nine hundred? Could you tell the difference?" No, I wouldn't be able to. <laughs> um, I only know what it is visually that what's on the bar. Right. Uh, but yeah, I mean, now obvious. Now the, the difference between seven and a thousand that's big enough gap where you could tell the difference for sure right um but i couldn't tell you exactly what the weight is it's just weight at, 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 when it, all, all in all it's all just weight when it comes down to it so um yeah you know have you gotten yeah. really good you know a lot of people when you're learning you know it's you know, two plates is 225. You know, three plates is 315. You know, mm. four is 405, 495. Mm. After that, the numbers start to really drop off for people for what they know the weights are. Like, are you like, oh, eight plates is this, nine plates is this? Like, do you got that math down really good? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, after a while, well, actually not after a while, pretty pretty quick uh, in training the last couple of years, we had to a- abandon our, our our precious American pound pounds. plates. That's yeah. what I wanted, yeah. yeah. And go with you those commie kilos. Yeah. So you can't, you don't even train with pound, you know, cause a lot of power lifters, they'll train with pound and co- competition. You go to kilo, but you can't train with pound because you're, li- you're limited by barbell sleeve. Yes. Length. Yeah. yeah. Even, even with the specialty barbells that I have, the F8, uh, sport craft bench bars that have the highest tensile strength uh, on the market right now. Um, I still am limited. I have to use key. Ke- I don't have a choice. I don't want to use kilos. I think they suck, right. but right. I got to that point where it was just getting dangerous. We actually had to, before we had enough kilos, I was still using pound plates and we had to duct tape the plates together, the mm. duct tape, the taped plates to the barbell ends. Um, it was getting really stupid. Uh, but yeah, it, so kilos, it's easy for me to remember when I get up to, what is it? When I get to seven reds. So seven reds is eight plus. Okay. Eight is nine plus. Nine is a thousand plus. Ten is eleven hundred plus. That's kind of how I remember it. Yeah. <laughs> what about then even on that? that bar, those specialty bar bench bars that you're using. And even with the kilo plates at 1400 pounds, how much room is there left on the sleeve? Like, is there much room left? Oh, you probably. Have more reds? Yeah. There's probably six inches of bar enough room for a, a spotter to get his hands around for a proper. Hand okay. Off. Yeah. Cause I, I like, uh, on the video, like the one I saw, it was cut. Like you couldn't actually even see the ends of the reds. I mean, mm-hmm. it just looked like a block of reds. Yeah. Like this freaking thick. Yeah. Of just solid reds. I was like, I wonder how much room is left at the end there. Yeah. I was really happy that at this meet, sometimes the reds don't always match. Sometimes they're kind of mix match different shades. Yeah. This meet, they were all the same. Yeah. So it looked, made for a really cool, not that that matters, but like <laughs> visually it looked really cool. Uh, but yeah, we've, um, the most weight I've had in my hands was is 1463. So the 12 reds plus a blue on the ends and training. And there was still, I mean, consider the, the kilos just make all the difference in the world. They really do. Yeah. Um, but so the, what was that? Was that uh, like a board press or uh, what kind of variation was that? Yeah, that was, uh, I was bringing it down to a one board. It didn't touch. I think I had an oh shit moment. Even, even I go through that s- stuff once in a while and I, bring it down to the one board and i just had this moment of like shit and i just pressed it probably a quarter inch from touching the board it's training it does it's not a contested lift um right. but that it was it was very heavy 
Yeah. Yeah. So, and we can, I want to ask a question before I ask the, the next question I'll ask is you to explain maybe the difference in kind of the different shirts. Cause we're talking to, mm-hmm. this is you're wearing a, and I'd also pre- preface this. Tommy and I were both powerlifters. We, we've known very little shit about equipped powerlifting. We've had several, you know, we've had several equipped powerlifters on the podcast over the years and we've learned more and more. And I've, you know, in preparation for having you on here, I even looked at it more. I kind of understand the difference in uh, band shirts versus poly shirts and some of that stuff, but uh, may, you know way better than me. But what I'm wondering in, like, these band shirts, what could be your ceiling? Like, so now you've hit the 1,400, like, I just wonder because it's kind of like the person, first person breaking whatever the, uh, my, you know, is four like the four-minute mile. Minute mile. But, yeah, like, you're out ahead of the pack. Uh, do you have aspirations of, like, doing 1500 pounds. I mean, is that even possible? Like, do you, do you not have aspirations of that? Cause you've kind of like are already out in front of everyone. What's it feel like? And what's your thought process? Well, luckily for me, I've not spent my career chasing others and trying to beat other people in the sport. I know, uh, I, I often tell the story. I think, I think it was Mark Bell when he was a competitive powerlifter. He had what he called his kill list. And it was a list of people that he wanted to beat in the sport. And after he would beat somebody, he'd cross their name off and go after the next person, the next person, the next person. So I've only spent my time concerned with me. And so even when I got to the top, well, I actually reached the top in June of 21, uh, where I hit my 1120, which was done in a single ply polyester. And that at the time was the heaviest bench ever done period, even including the band shirts. Um, but even once that, when I reached that point, I mean, my, it got eclipsed by five pounds by tiny Meeker, I think, four months later so like whatever but um because i've spent my time focused on me and my numbers oh yeah i've got much more aspirations 14 is not the end it's not the ceiling the number as you mentioned that um i could gladly retire on and be finally be happy with for for life is is 1500 or three quarters of a uh, <laughs> at least three quarters of an american ton i know yeah right right an actual the ton that ton. counts yeah, yeah. The ton that matters <laughs> the two thousand pounds so that's the number I really want. And because of my recent training in the last year, eight months, it's definitely possible. Uh, whether I do it or somebody else do it, I do think it's humanly possible to do it. Um, for <laughs> I'm, t- I'm, I'm stepping away from the band shirts for a little while, going back to Polly. Uh, I've been doing the band shirt game for two and a half years, and it's getting a little kind of redundant, a little bit boring, and I just can't take the stress. Uh, the training I did to get that 1400 one week out, I was, I was, I, I, I did my last bench workout on Saturday, the week out from the meet. I did my last warm up weight before I would open her. So I did at like 1220 to a one board or something and then called the workout done. I had about a two and a half minute personal time in my head where I didn't want to do the meet. I wanted to pull out. I just, my heart wasn't in it. I had, I was just at the end of my rope with this training. Uh, Luckily, I didn't pull out. I was like, well, once we get on the road and start making the long drive to Tennessee and get to the meet, get to the hotel, do the weigh-ins, I'll get in like meat mode, and then it'll all be fine. And then that's that's what happened. Luckily, I didn't pull out. Words rarely spoken by most men. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I'll, I'll eat that. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think it would be good to explain then difference in shirts. I guess from what I know uh, – Band is what would be considered unlimited. Poly, which is what would be considered traditionally single ply or multi ply, depend, depending on yeah. what what uh, thickness of the material of the poly. But you, what's how do you explain the difference? You know, we got a lot of people that listen that probably don't know. So, yep. well, like you said, polyester is fabric, fabric to fabric, just as poly is to denim. Different fabrics, but fabric nonetheless. And you have single ply, which is just one layer of polyester. You do have single ply denim shirts, but they're kind of dinosaur technology. You never see single ply denims anymore. So you got single ply poly, uh, which I really, really, really enjoy. I did a lot of single ply poly in uh, 2021. And then you have multiply, which is just anything more than one layer. So double ply all the way to three, four. There are very high multi-layer poly shirts out there. And then the band shirts came out uh, quite a few years ago, but they're multi-layered shirts, but they're not made of fabric like poly or denim. They're made of uh, what you would, I'm sure everybody knows what knee wraps are, uh, stretchy, you know, elastic like knee wraps. And that's essentially what they're made of is knee wrap material. Um, They're called band shirts and they're in their own separate category called unlimited. Uh, At first, when they hit the market, 
uh, federations were just lumping them into multiply. Like, oh, yeah, that's multiply. That's fine. We got pissed. We're like, uh, no, this is very, very, very different. It needs its own category. And we got that win, I think, in 21 or 22. And they officially separated into its own category called the Unlimited Division. So you're okay with it as long as it's separated by its own category, which it is. Yes, yes, what, yes. Are, are there some people that don't like it? Like, oh, yeah. That they, uh, don't like the shirts or the fact that it's yeah, separated? No, no, that don't like the shirts. That they, that they would say, even even though it's separated, I still don't like it. You know, oh, like yeah. It's, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, that's fine. I, I, right. I didn't want to do them at first. I was very, very happy. So uh, you were doing, closer in that camp almost more so originally that you're like, yeah, yeah. I don't know about these band shirts. Yeah. yeah. yeah I was, so what changed your perspective then on it? Well, so two things happened. One, they got their own division. So big win. That's awesome. It's its own thing, its own entity. Uh, the sport recognizes that it is, in fact, so different. It's completely different. And back in the day, like I'm talking like I'm old or something, but <laughs> back in the day, uh, it was actually illegal to add things to your shirt. Uh, Gene Richlock, the first man to bench 900 and 1,000 pounds, oftentimes got uh, reported or accused of hiding things in his shirt, like bungee cords or like elastic material, which is illegal. And these shirts come out that are made of nothing but elastic material. It's like, well, how's this How's this all right? But so it's a, right. it's a category. That's the first win. That's the first reason I was okay with it. Second thing happened was when I benched 1120 in single ply poly in June of 21 at York Barbell, uh, in November of that same year, Tiny Meeker came up to York Barbell. I was competing there as well. I bombed out, sucked. But he benched 1125 in a four or five layered band shirt to eclipse my mark. And I was like, all right, I'll play this game with y'all. I'll just, yeah. everybody else is doing it. My contemporaries, my peers are all doing it. I'll play your game. I didn't want to at first, but I'll do it. And then I'll, and then I've done what I've done. So, right. It is interesting, and uh, I'll I'll shout out a uh, longtime listener of the podcast, uh, Dylan Coates is his name. He came up and did uh, uh, our powerlifting meet a couple weekends ago, and he competes single ply, multi ply. He did uh, single ply bench only. He hit a five twenty nine bench, and I was talking to him this week, and he said uh, he's uh, applied a lot of what he's called cold principles. He's trains uh, a lot of uh, a lot of his training. He's catered to like what he's learned from you and he said he's uh, had the most success he's ever had based on doing that but anyways we were talking and I was just talking to him I was you know kind of prodding him to get more information on these bench shirts and I guess what seemed odd to me and you tell me what you, what you think about it from your perspective because then again I'm not in that world but mm. you know maybe the mentality is that's not what we've done, so we don't like it. And you kind of talked about it there before. It's like, that's not what we're all doing, so it's almost like above and beyond. And it, and his other point was that, well, band shirts maybe don't have quite as stiff of a learning curve as the poly shirts. I don't know if you'd say the same yes. as that. But then just my devil's advocate thought as well, what's the point of the equipment? Is the point of the equipment to be challenging to use or is the point of the equipment to allow you to lift as much weight as possible yeah so i mean the original the original design and purpose was to keep you from getting hurt to keep you from tearing your pack from blowing out your shoulder from ripping your quads right uh gear has been used in the sport since the 80s early 80s I and mean, people don't realize that like the gear's been around for like 40 50 years so 40 years, whatever. But, <laughs> but anyway, so it's we're been not a part sticklers of, for the exact rule uh, yeah. facts uh, around here. We make stuff up all the time. We want to so. be historically accurate. Yeah. But, yeah. Since like 80, I think the squat suit came out in 80 or 81. The bencher came out in 84, I think. Um, don't quote me exactly, but it's been a part of the sport for a very long time. And uh, in the 2000s, that's what everybody did was just multiply. It was that's, that was the biggest thing, had the biggest payouts, um, but it kind of switched. So the original design, you know, stop getting hurt, whatever, with the benefit of lifting more weight. Obviously, it's switched where the point is to lift more weight, but you're not going to get hurt. Yes, the weights are heavier, but you're not going to tear a pack. You're not going to blow out a shoulder if you're doing things correctly, of course. But um, anytime you hear somebody ripping a pack, what are they doing? They're they're benching raw. Um, right, right. Do what right. you want. But like I, I want to do this sport for decades, not just years. Uh, and the serious uh, tear or something still being a natural athlete is going to set me back 
quite a ways and I don't want to do that. Um, yeah, the band shirts, I mean, they are easier to learn, uh, but you're all going to lift maximum weights with them in a sport where, you know, the point on the equip side, especially it's about lifting more weight. Um, I think there's a lot to learn with poly or even denim. Uh, I started out in a double ply denim, a hand me down Karen Klein two ply denim was my first bench shirt I ever had by a man named Adam Hicks. And uh, he told me, if you can learn how to bench in that thing, you can bench in anything. That's been true to this day. Um, so I, I like advocating for, I think there's skill to be learned in poly that can be very beneficial if you go to a band shirt. Uh, the, the opposite is not necessarily true. Um, I'm, in fact, going back to poly myself. I have to relearn how to do poly correctly because it's so different and so much more technical. Um, so there's a lot of routes you can take with that argument, but I think it's all awesome when you come down to it. Yeah. I think that's a good, I think that's a good attitude uh, Mm -hmm. to have on it too. So as long as we're talking about bench still, if you could just, uh, you only get to name three, uh, who do you think are the three best benchers of all time, regardless of, you know, equipment, gender, body weight, you know, just your three best benchers of all time. However you categorize it, it's your list. So you get to say whatever you want. Well, uh, number one spot, I will forever say this to anybody in person or online. The person who still inspires me to this day, my hero is Ryan Canelli. I, the most unadulterated, badass motherfucker in the sport that'll ever live, Ryan Canelli. Holy shit, the bench monster. So he's my number one. Uh, number two, I'd give it to Julius Max because he's got the highest raw bench of all time. You can't. You can't take anything away from the man. He's absolutely incredible. Uh, only three? Damn. Well, in present uh, company, not excluded, you know, and that wouldn't be Tommy and I. So <laughs> you you could, what I'm saying, you could be on the list also here, you know. Oh, I don't want to. No, that's, that's egotistical. I mean, I don't think okay. I want to do that. Um, no, uh, I, then I'd put um, Laura Phelps as being one of the best also. Uh, just what she did in the 2000s still I don't think will ever be matched her body weight benching 540 at 165 in a poly squatting almost 800 pounds like just insane I mean I, I have a list of like 10 or 12 I, but to condense it down to three yeah, yeah I'd, I'd say Ryan Julius and Laura absolutely are the best ever I mean it would be I, I suppose people could make an argument of adding other people to the list but then who do you you got to take somebody off too that, so that's that, the tricky part too yeah that's really tricky yeah um, what do you think? Like, I don't, I don't know. I've never heard him say anything about even wanting to do it, but like someone like Julius, I, I, I would imagine Polly is such a learning curve. You throw him in a Polly shirt and it's not like it, it could be years before he even gets anything like mm-hmm. I, and, and his raw numbers are so high. Um, that seems like a very uphill battle to even learn how to use that, especially at his size. It's like, what do you even find? to use for that. I, I don't know, but I'm curious on your take, or if he goes uh banded, could he, could he do more weight? If he, his first month of banded shirt benching, could he do more than what he can raw? Like what would that, what would that training curve be like for something yeah. like that? No, it, okay. it, it, it'd be a pretty immediate. I mean, anybody can throw on a, a shirt, especially a band shirt. That's very, very easy to learn low, low learning curve or shallow, but uh, he, he'd be able to bench a lot more right away. Um, Julius would have to just be a lot more technical of a bench presser. I think he'd have to really work, dial in technique. There's so much more technical things that go into shirted benching, even, even considering poly or band shirt, but like, we'll just even for Polly's sake, it is so technical. There is one path that bar can take. It's called the groove. And if you come out of that groove, you'll dump it. It's just, there, you can't, you can't touch here, here, or here. You have one spot. And in right. particular, I use katanas for 12 years straight. And when you're trying to touch a weight in a katana with that very technical groove that it has, you have millimeters of movement that you can, that you can leeway one way or the other. It feels like the weight sitting on a fishing line when you're going for a touch. If you don't what millimeter two weight or freight, you're going to dump it on your belly or dump it towards your face. It's so technical. And there's a reason why it took me 17 years. Or I'm sorry, 15 minus two, 13 years. I went the opposite direction, <laughs> uh, 15 years competing. So it took me 13 years in, shirts in the same style of shirt katanas for 13 years to hit my 1120 and i specialized in equipment for 13 years now 15 years i've been doing band shirts for over two but so i mean it's, it's a very technical hardcore thing um right. so the, the, the technical aspect he's got the strength behind it he just has to learn how to do it um, whether he wants to take the time to do it i think he's 
he seems pretty set in what he's doing. Um, I would be too if I was in his position, but yeah, you know, it's it's all on what you want as an individual, what you want to get out of the sport. Yeah. And so when you said when you said like for that thirteen years, were you using katana shirts the entire thirteen? Is that mm-hmm. so is there I mean, is there that much of a variance between different brands and styles with them? Like, it, it, is that that much of a thing? Absolutely, it is. Yeah, because you got different cuts, you got different uh, sewing methods, you've got different uh, collars, materials. The material really makes or makes the, the, the difference in the shirt. So, a single ply katana to a triple ply SDP from Inzer are is two different worlds. I mean, it's it's poly to poly, but the different cuts, the different styles, grid stitch, not grid stitch, open back, closed back, Velcro. You know, double ply, triple ply, single ply. Okay. There's so, so many different variations. So it's yeah. not one of those things like I did 1100 in a katana. Yeah. Just bring me the other shirt. I'll also do 1100. Like that's not how that goes at all. I mean, there not is a as, learning curve for each one. Yeah, there is. Saying. Yeah. Yeah. Each shirt has its own unique groove, own unique behaviors that you have to learn and master. Um, so and is, part of, what, is part of that game also like figuring out like what shirt is best for your body type too? Is, is that a oh, component yeah. of it? Okay. Yeah, I was able to get away with katanas. Katanas are a very, very dense, very stiff uh, material, very high dense, stiff polyester. Um, I'm able to get away with that because apparently I have abnormally short humerus bones. I, I get flack all the time for having like two centimeter long arms. I mean, they seem pretty normal to me, but uh, whatever, <laughs> internet stuff. But I, I get away with it because I've got a very short, what we call the stroke, a very short distance that I have yeah. to move. Or I can make a very stiff material move my short distance and come back. Now, somebody like Ryan Canelli, somebody that has very long arms is not going to have as much luck with a very stiff material because they have to move the, the bar to further distance. Therefore, that material has to move a further distance. So somebody with long arms, longer stroke would fare better with stretchy material so like an insert sdp a titan f6 or a band shirt whereas somebody who's short and stocky would do well uh a titan katana maybe an injure insert rage x something like that it's different material so it's just it's body proportions it's how you're built uh body composition things like that's a lot of different uh variants and things you have to think about how, how big around are your upper arms you ever measure them uh cold yeah i don't do it very often i think they're yeah. They're like 23 and a yeah. three quarters or 23 and a half. <laughs> yeah, they're big. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what you were talking about there, like the technical aspect and then like the differences and the different makes and cuts and uh, everything of the shirt. Maybe it was even you I listened to make this comparison. So if, if it was, you'll like this comparison. If not, tell me if it's BS or not. But it was like uh, raw powerlifting maybe is like, less of a it's obviously less technical but like less of a technical sport because it is just like it is just like a measurement of how strong you are Mm -hmm. whereas like equipped powerlifting or equipped benching is more of a comparison almost like uh like around here it's like dirt track racing like a you have to be good at racing and then b you have to have the equipment to do it and then most importantly you have to know like the equipment you have like you can't just be good at it and you can't just know the equipment you have to like put it together and it's like more of this blend of everything where the the comparison I think I heard was like something to that that type of racing was that you that said that or am I just pulling that out <laughs> not, of my ass not me uh, <laughs> okay it's a good compare. I, I like that though okay yeah. it's a, or or you know dr- drag racing just down a right. straight asphalt uh track as opposed to a circular track that's dirt and there's so many more variables to it things you have to know and and you know temperature and composition of the dirt did it rain is it dry yeah all the different technical things right. I think that's a really good comparison yeah okay Tanner, uh, just crediting yourself I, for new, <laughs> new comparison i'll just not, say i made that up though, not yeah. mine. go ahead man ain't mine okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh the other thing people want to know then and i think you've kind of talked about it is um when's full power then right <clears throat> yeah uh eventually down the road sometime uh, in, the, in the future um, so you do you do you do want to like that is a goal of yours or at some point in time though you would like to do full yeah. power oh yeah i need something different i've been doing uh i did i done bench only i did full power i mean when i was a kid when i was 18 19 20 i think my last full power meet was when i was 22 or 21 so i did it i did it because i thought you had to too i mean i still to this day think like if you're a bench only guy or a deadlift only guy you're not a power lifter because powerlifting is the sport of squat bench and deadlift that's just my opinion my wife disagrees with that 
Um, so I could, I consider myself a bench specialist or a bench press athlete, not a power lifter. Um, I do, I've been doing bench only for the majority of my 15 years competing, uh, 19 years lifting weights. Um, and I need to change up. I got to do something different. I mean, not that I've never enjoyed what I'm doing, but especially these last, oh man, eight months or so, the training I put myself through and the pain, uh, I'll tell you what, man, like benching 1400 at that meet, it, it didn't even feel like a bench press. It's just shearing forces, just painful pressure. I can't even tell what's going on. I just know that there's a bar in my hands and I'm in pain and it doesn't even feel like I'm bench pressing. It's just forces. So I need a break from that for a little while and doing full power would be an interesting, like new challenge. Um, having to put all three lifts together, the things that come with squatting and deadlifting, and I can't deadlift because I got a, a bench press body, but I'll make do. Um, so I do, <laughs> I do want to get into something different. I, I tell people that the 1400 marked the end of a journey, then and, and they get worried, like, well, what does that you mean you're done? Like, oh, I'm not, I'm not done forever. I'm done for right now. Um, I, I be, you know, in in less than a or just over a year's time, becoming the first human to do a 1200, 1300 and 1400 pound bench press. I'm pretty satisfied for a little while. And now I could kind of turn the page, got rid of the Mohawk, uh, fresh, you know, fresh uh, start and do something different for a while. So yeah, that'd be kind of interesting to get into. I think that's cool. People would be interested on that. I saw Donnie and his story the other day. I'm sure you saw, what did he say? Uh, What are the numbers that uh, uh, Jimmy would do to get to 3000 or so? If you go in full power, what would you expense, expect your bench to be like? I mean, if you're squatting beforehand, is that, you know, your bench is a full body exercise when, when you're doing what you're doing. I mean, is that going to take, will you still be able to hit numbers like that in full power? Well, does it take off or what do you expect? Well, I'm doing, I'm not doing band shirts in full power either. I'm doing poly. Okay. That's, okay. that's the other thing too, is I want to do it. What I see is the right way. And if I want to join the ranks and have the respect from, Chad Ikes, AJ Roberts, Dave, Dave Hoff, Donnie Thompson. Yeah. I need to do it the way they did it. And they're not using band shirts, even though they weren't around at the time, but doing full power with a band shirt, I could do that. Um, but I want to do it the way they did. I want to do it the hard way, the right way, as I see as the right way. So my bench is going to be considerably lower than it is. <laughs> I'm not going to be doing 13, 1400 pounds in a full meet with a band shirt. Uh, so even though it's a full body lift, um, with conditioning being uh, well enough at the time, I don't think the lower body will be an issue. What's going to be an issue for me is the flexibility and the mobility in the shoulders to get a straight bar on my back. That's what's going to hurt me in the bench is straight bar squats. And I just started the process uh, this week, actually, on Monday. I go down to see my uh, chiropractic buddy in Fredericksburg, Virginia, uh, once a week on Mondays. And I said, hey, I got a project for us. He's like, do tell. And I said, I got to put a straight bar on my back. It was okay, cool. So we started working on it right away. Uh, so that's going to be the challenge uh, is making sure my shoulders don't get obliterated. Right. Uh, with enough mobility, that shouldn't be a problem. But right now, like it's, it's, it's no bueno. So <laughs> got to work on that. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Tommy talked about the rep work that you do in the bench press. Mm-hmm. And like we've had a few, like I said, we've had a few multiply guys on the show in the past. And a lot of them are, um, They've come from almost like I would I guess I'd say the West Side conjugate school of powerlifting. Mm. It seems like your training is different than that, mm. uh, from what I understand. So I guess what I would wonder is uh what what is what in your opinion, compared to what you do, what does West Side conjugate have wrong? What were they doing wrong? What were they doing right? You know, or how have you what's how is yours different than that? I'll start with the right part. I really, really like and agree and apply the principle of rotating your movements, uh, avoiding the law of accommodation. Absolutely. That is a absolute necessity. So these kids these days that train SBD five or six days a week or more, uh, I think really got it wrong. Never doing any variance, just doing straight bar squat bench deadlift. Um, and when you say, so you when to... you say rotating movements, like how often are you talking here? Like what is like, how often does something need to be rotated out? Once a week. Oh, okay. Okay. So I got two bench days a week. One day is for just heavy shirted bench work that's on Saturdays Wednesday is my variation day where I always do something different I don't even know what I'm doing till I get to the gym I'm just like show up and I'm like hmm 
what haven't I done in a while? What would suck? What would be very difficult? Let's do that. So Wednesdays, I always change something up, do something different. That's one thing that West Side absolutely got correct. That is that is law of accommodation. You, you do something too often for too long, you start going backwards, you stop progressing. So that's what I apply to my training right now. What I don't like, and I'm very, very, very vocal about it and very opinionated about it, people don't like it, but I do not like, no, I hate the speed work. I think speed work is worthless. I think it's for the birds. Your max effort, your true max effort lift is not going to move like this. If it moves like that, you got to put more weight on the bar. That's not your max. Your max weight is going to be a battle. It's going to be a grinder of a lift. So I think your time should be better well spent not doing sissy foo-foo percentages and 60% with bands and chain, all that difficult crap that just it, it makes this – Similarly, not complicated sport, extra complicated, you know, percentages and bands, accommodating resistance, all that stuff for speed. Like, eh, no, I think you should learn how to be strong, be strong for long periods of time, learn how to grind a lift out because how your max lift is probably going to move. Like that 1400 was a grinder. I didn't think I was going to get it. Um, so speed work is one thing that I just rip apart. Uh, anytime somebody's willing to listen to me talk about it or ask, I, I rip speed work apart. Like it's my job. So you could, um, because you're rotating in variations on your non shirted day, you're rotating in variations. So you could, you would you potentially use accommodating resistance occasionally on those rotations, or do you do you stay away from it altogether? Then stay away from it. I okay. Uh, last year, the year of 2022, I can count, uh, I mean two fingers. I can count twice that I used any accommodating resistance in, in the entire year of training. It was twice once. I was doing banded banded lockouts on a on a bench, and the second time was I had chains on a floor press. That was it. I I think people get too wrapped up with the combining resistance and having this much in the bottom and this much at the top and this and this all these percentages and all this crazy crap. My very simple philosophy is, I want to lift heavy weights on the platform. I have to lift heavy weights on in the gym consistently. Get good at lifting heavy weights. And we don't compete with bands. We don't compete with chains. We compete with straight weight. So I want to get really good and efficient at lifting straight weight. So everything I do is straight weight and heavy. And I can do that. I can get away with that because of the rotation of the movements. So one day I come in and I do max effort. And most of this is equipped in some fashion or form, whether it be with a, a sling. That's part of the variation. Yeah, like what, I mean, you know, what, yeah. what you're wearing is part of the variation of what you're doing. Correct. Yeah. I'm just, yeah. it's, it's called my not shirted day just because I'm not wearing a bench shirt, but I'm wearing some other apparatus that as, as adding assistance or protection. Uh, wow. Not always raw, sometimes assisted in some way, shape, or form. I might do uh, reverse grip four press. The next week, uh, reverse grip raw three board. The next week, uh, two inch range of motion like lockouts. The next week, full range reps, five by five. There's, I'm always changing it up. Cambered bar, three board work, you know, just anything. But it's always straight weight because I want to get good at lifting straight weight. That's what we do on the platform. So on the, on those days, are you usually, uh, are you doing a top set or are you doing straight sets or what? Uh, how do you handle that? You know, are you doing uh, one top set of five when you're going forward and then back downs or does that change even does that part of it change too that's always changing okay I, it's it's I, it's really about what i want to accomplish but also how i feel so some days like once once in a while i'll just walk in there and go hmm uh, i have rep out sets uh in a slinger but also in a shirt you know stuff like that i'll be like well i haven't done a rep out set with 700 in six months Let's just try that, you know, just work up to that set and be done. Um, and hopefully that number, either I can match it from six months ago or increase upon it. And that means my training is going in the right direction. Um, or I'll do like a five by five or I'll work up to a heavy triple and then maybe do some back down sets. I didn't feel like I worked hard enough or just there's all there's so many things that I can change and and, and move around. And always, as long as I'm being challenged. And it's difficult. That's the thing too. People get so wrapped up in the things that they're good at. You need to do, you need to do things you suck at. Right. Um, if it's if it's difficult, if it's hard to do, you should probably do more of that. Uh, how do you how do you uh, how do you record all of it? Like how do you know? Like if it's a reverse grip 
two board with the slinger set mm-hmm. of five. Mm-hmm. Like, where do you keep this information that, you know, okay, do you <laughs> kind of do, you, that's what I wondered if you kind of mentally remember most of the, like most of the big ones, the important ones or. Yep. Okay. Yep, that's, it's logged away. It's just, it's not that I'm super smart. I'm not, but yeah. it's just something I'm, I'm good at I'm yeah. just, having done it for so 19 years. I can just say, I can just kind of recall Maybe not down to the finest damn detail, but I can right. definitely recall it. The last time I did this variation, I hit this. Okay, let's try to beat that. Or, hey, or, you know, maybe I did doubles the last time. I got to do triples this time or work up to a max single or do high volume sets of 10, something crazy. Just making sure it's always hard and difficult. That's that's the key to success. Okay. So, so like on a day when, you know, let's say you're getting up there, you know, like in that 90 plus percent range, you know, whether that's 1100 or 1200, if you're using a band shirt, what mm-hmm. does warm up look like on that day? Like how, how what are you taking for jumps and, and what do your reps look like there? So the very first thing I do before I even lay down to bench the empty bar, I do super D Donnie Thompson shoulder protocol. So I grab a band, loop it around something that I'm not going to pull oh, over, yeah. put it across the shoulder. I do my rotations and cross the body and pronations. I'll put it around the back of my shoulder and do chicken wings, get all the soft tissue nice to warm and prepared, how he says it, prepared for the abuse you're about to put it through. After I do the shoulder protocol, then I lay down to do the empty bar. Um, the empty bar is the only time I will ever grab a bar bra pronated. If it's anything above the empty bar, it's all reverse grip. So I'll do the empty bar for one, two to three sets, because sometimes the first set with the empty bar feels like dog shit. So I'll do the empty bar for two to three sets close, wide, reverse, some JMs to get all the blood in all the right areas, chest, shoulders, triceps. Then I'll throw, so on a shirted day, so we'll use the kilos. So I'll throw one kilo, two kilo. I just, I do plate jumps all the way up. I'll do one, two, three, four, throw a slinger on, do five or six, uh, throw my shirt on, do what I call my break-in set, which is just me getting in shirted bench pressing mode with around 800 pounds for like a floating, triple or so it's not going to touch a board it's lightweight it's like you know floating reps for like three then i'll jump to like a thousand fifty or eleven hundred uh for my first official like heavy warm-up set heavy warm-up set (laughs) and then i'll hit that to like yeah relative yeah relatively speaking i'll hit that to a two board or something for like a double or a triple then i'll go to like if if my goal is to hit a top end single then i'll i'll make appropriate jumps so from a thousand fifty to 1200 or 1220 hit that for a single uh maybe jump to 1300 hit that for a single and then whatever that goal weight is 14 1405 1420 whatever the whatever the hell it is um hit that to a half board or a one board for a single and then i I was doing that back down sets uh, a few weeks out from the meet which i was having some relative success with um but that's kind of a rare thing too but so that's so. that's a lot of bench pressing like getting up to that single how long is that taking you from from where let's say from where you start with the empty bar to where you're mm-hmm. getting to that top single what's that timeline looking like oh we're looking at now again this is this is the oh, i'm working out with like five or six other people mm-hmm. so it did not take me that long to do that at the meet that i did yeah this is right. yeah. week so but in the gym with other people and everything and all these other uh, variants and uh, things, uh, I'd say we start lifting at 10 o'clock. Um, my top set, I'm hitting around 1230 to one o'clock. Okay. So it, it takes some time to get up there. It does. Yeah. 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 That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. It's yeah so it's a day. Yeah. It's a day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Saturdays, bro. That's what's dude, going on. That that's day. what we do. Yeah. Saturdays yeah. is just, we wake up. We're benching and then we're coming home. That that that, that is no, what so, Saturdays so, so are. So you wake up and eat, and like while while you're waking up and eating, it's all the bench. Day. You know, I mean, like it's yep. thinking about the bench that's coming up, talking about the bench that's coming up. You it get is. there, and, yeah. yeah, and it's like a uh, however many hours in there, and then probably after that, you're eating again and like yeah, then recovering from it. From that day. A, so it's a, a day. midday nap, wake up, yeah. <laughs> edit the video together to put it on Patreon, and then yeah. Go go to sleep that night. The whole yeah. day is structured around that because that's what I compete and that's what I want to be the best at. Yeah. So mentally for me, my weeks actually start on Saturday mornings, not Mondays, not whatever. It's it's Saturday mornings. And based on that performance, I base the rest of the week on till yeah. the next start of the next week, which is the next Saturday. Um, so that entire day is structured around that workout because it was that important for this big lift. Yeah. I get that. That makes mm-hmm. sense. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, Jimmy, we've got this game we play with every guest that we have on. 
It's called Overrated Underrated. It's pretty simple. We've got a special uh, uh, Jimmy Kolb set of topics here that are handpicked for you, and you just have to decide if each one is overrated or underrated. Uh, the most important thing to remember, though, is you can't ride the line. You have to you have to pick on each one whether you think it's overrated or underrated. Okay, yeah, it's cool. Let's do All it. Right. All right, so overrated or underrated, Montana. Montana? Yeah. I was born there. Yeah. Uh, underrated. Uh, do, do you, you ever, make it back there yeah, ever do you at ever all? get back? Not since I was 14. Okay. Yeah, it's been what, a while. What part of Montana? Because we're from South Dakota, so not you know not oh. not way out of our way out of our realm here. I was born at the Bozeman Clinic, uh, Bozeman, Montana. I grew up in Belgrade, just west of Bozeman, so the Gallatin Valley, Big Sky Country. Okay, yeah, Bozeman. What do they call Bozeman now? It's like uh, like it's like a cal- like the, there's like a slang term from Bozeman b- because it's very like um, nice and like very. Uh, like it's like there's a lot of money in Bozeman and stuff like that. I can't remember. There's like a ah uh, shit. I'm trying. Uh, it, it's it was one of the I think it was one of the fastest growing cities in the nation at one point. Yeah, I mean, there's a shitload of people flooding into Bozeman. Um, yeah. But it's been like 20 years since I've been there almost, so I couldn't help you there. Okay, no, nah. <laughs> I think it is much more recent too, where it's like a lot of outside money has moved in there, like where they're like moving away from other places and moving to somewhere like Bozeman, but okay. So underrated Montana though. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's definitely fair. Okay. underrated. Underrated or overrated the exorcist. Um, underrated. Dude, scariest movie of all time. <laughs> That's it's it's been rated that by I don't know how many different platforms or sites like no definitely underrated. Do you feel like that uh, title still still holds up today? Historically speaking, if we're talking about like just horror movies from start to finish and uh, movie history, yeah, I think so. Uh, what it what it did to the audiences back then, just I mean it's it's a I like it's a good movie even though it was, what it was 70, 70, seventy something yeah. Something, yeah. So, yeah. yeah Early yeah, mid seventy, like for what for the for the time period, dude, it's it's phenomenal. I, I think it's great. I still love that movie. What's your favorite horror movie? Oh god damn. Um well I, I'm gonna put it with the one that absolutely just fucked my brain as a kid. Uh the one that ruined every horror movie since for me was the the original, the first paranormal activity. Okay. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I, it's a long story. I won't. I won't tell you unless you have time. But uh, no. But I. I watched that in the theaters, driving it. Like you're saying, like 2007 theater. or whatever when that one. Yeah, 2007 okay. or six. Yeah, they yeah. read the first one. We were driving to the theater, but we we were listening to the radio. They were talking about it, like oh, and we knew going in, it's not real. The radio, it's not real. It's 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 just like uh you know any other found footage bullshit. You know like uh, right. Blair Witch and bro. It felt real. I'm getting goosebumps, man. Because it <laughs> seven people left the theater during the movie, and every time it comes to that like bedroom scene where it's like that wide angle, it's like night seven, night nine. The whole room went. You could just hear this like hush of like just fuck. Where are we gonna watch this? You know what's next? <laughs> and my friend went to drop me off at my house for some. And I lived in the boondocks in no- northeastern Ohio, like middle of nowhere. Came home, he went to drop me off. My family was gone. Every light was off in the house. The security light somehow was knocked out. It was pitch black. I said, I'm not staying here. Let's go to your house. (laughs) I could not stay in my own house that night. It it fucked me up, dude. So that's I my probably would have had to walk out the, walk uh, out the movie theater. I don't think it, I could take yeah, seven oh, people no walked I out. <laughs> I couldn't fucking. One guy was like, "Fuck this movie." His girlfriend ran after him. There was the first two, and then <laughs> two more, and one more, and, one, and people left. They couldn't finish it. It was, it was, it was, it was horrifying when we watched it the first time. It's terrible. It was terrible. <laughs> so then, how did you feel about this? Because there was a few sequels of that too, wasn't there? Oh, there's like five or six of them now. The second one was okay. The third one was still okay the fourth fifth they, they all suck they just, yeah but they're gonna as long as they can make money on it they're gonna keep making them it's just how yeah. how it works mm-hmm. right okay well, that's that's good okay all right overrated or underrated you talked about it i probably know your opinion but i want to know why uh overrated or underrated reverse grip benching underrated 
Underrated. I don't know why it's not more popular. Everybody that tries it under my recommendation or others love it. It's competition legal. A lot of people don't know that. I mean, and, and feds that matter. I don't know about USAPL or USPA <laughs> or any of those, but um, but yeah, it's competition legal. Anatomically speaking, it's it's a much more superior way to bench. Um, it's it's safe for the shoulders. It's safer on the pecs. It puts all the stress on the triceps. So it's a raw bench variation with little stress on the shoulders and pecs and puts it all in the triceps. What else could I want in a, in a variation, you know? Um, yeah, it's it's the RGBP, reverse grip bench press, the backwards bench mafia. I don't know why more, more, more people don't do it. <laughs> so do you think more uh, people that just compete, just compete straight raw, do you think they should be utilizing it more in their training? A- absolutely, I do. Yeah. I know just because everybody does everything one way does not mean there's not a better way. Um, once I dropped pronated raw bench after 16 years doing it one way once i learned how to reverse grip using my variation between the fingers that's what i wanted to ask you about and i don't know if tommy if you know this but if you watch him yeah. he doesn't put the bar right here uh, it, the bar goes it's kind of like how people your pointer do that and talon grip sort of for squat but it's a, almost a yeah. little different on that yeah we actually got it because that's one of the javelin throwers grips is holding but it's called the fork grip between the fingers here uh, okay so the bar sits not horizontal on the palm. It sits vertically in the hand. Oh, Some people, like Chad Ikes, will bench between the ring and middle. But you can't really grab it that way. But if you use that very between the trigger and middle finger, you can get a nice, secure grip on the bar. After 16 years of benching one way, once I learned how to reverse grip, 16 years, dropped it like a bad habit. I'll never do it again. It, it's 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 so damn cool and beneficial and fun and it just builds everything it's it's you gotta try it it's definitely underrated i'm definitely more curious about yeah, it after too, you yeah. talk more and more about it that's the trick you got to hold between these two fingers okay that doesn't i mean i i need to try it to have I, yeah opinion. like it just, i'm still having when a I think hard about time. It in my head that doesn't seem yeah. like natural like but oh uh, dude it, it it's it's for, it for people your listening joints. yeah for people listening yeah. you're talking about between your pointer and in and, and or between your pointer and middle finger yes how right. you're saying you hold it which, correct yeah I, until i can have a bar in my hands i just still can't you'll like, be picture that. you'll be surprised it, it puts a lot of pressure on the bone right here again because it's not horizontal in the palm it's vertical so all that weight is on that bone right in the palm. It's a little bit painful at first. Once you get over it, I mean, dude, I'll never go back to pronated bench. I guarantee well, everyone that's listening is go like dude, keeps going like this yeah. as they listen. Like you can't help but be like actually like put your arms out there and uh, yeah. Yeah, think about what it actually feels like. We could go down that rabbit hole, but I know we don't got enough time. But it is, is you got to try it, man. Is it's the on rack harder? Or rack getting used to like that, um, like or just with a spot, I suppose it doesn't with matter if you with have a spot really or a handoff. Or, yeah. it, it's actually because it, it puts the bar in such close line with your line of force, which is your forearm right here, puts it in direct line with the forearm. It's a very powerful grip. It's a very powerful unrack. Um, I'd, I'd recommend a handoff in any bench situation. Um, right. When you go to rack it though, be careful. Watch your knuckles. Mm. I've oh, taken, yeah, yeah, I've, yeah. I've pinched skin off. Yeah, particularly on my middle. You got to watch the rack, kind of ease it into the rack but besides that man it is it is dope it's awesome oh that's cool okay all right last one uh most important one here it's worth all the marbles overrated or underrated mres oh my god (laughs) fucking overrated dude it's whole overrated over i will say though the only one i could yeah what's the best one Dude, yeah, the the only one that I could never get down was the Ratatouille MRE. Okay. That is the only damn one. And when I was going through combat training or any other field ops that I did when I was in, I ate all of them cold. Yeah, I, yeah. I never you didn't use up a the heat packet. One. Yeah, I didn't want to. I was. I didn't. I was too high. I didn't want to waste the time. I just <laughs> ate, cracked open, ate them all cold. Yeah, but they're overrated. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> is there a worst one in your mind, like that you had? Well, the the ratatouille I couldn't even eat. So yeah, that's okay, gonna so that's be, the worst. Yeah. But what the was, one that, that I I'm not I'm not I was never in the armed forces, so I don't have the uh, what was the ratatouille? Whatever the fuck ratatouille is, it's some <laughs> French stuff. And it, oh my god, I, I cracked it open. I tried to get. I was start. I was really hungry. I tried to get it down. I oh, spit it out. I think I just put the coffee grounds in my 
lip like a fucking like a pinch and uh just, yeah I, I just got through it but i could not eat that crap the ratatouille was disgusting <laughs> the worst one that, and we've talked about it on the podcast many times the worst one i ever had and they quit making it quite a long time ago so you, you probably never had to come in contact with it but it was the the veggie omelet was just the most atrocious oh. piece of not food that i you could ever come not across food i love that yeah. i've i i'm really glad it must have they must have not made it uh, up to, I, I got no, it. No, they quit making it. They get replaced it because it was notoriously hated. Like nobody would, you know, when like they're getting passed out or whatever, and like you get a certain one, and everyone's like, oh, shit, no. Uh, and like you can't give it away. Yeah. Like that was the veggie omelet. Maybe like the ratatouille was that's, too. That's just maybe the, maybe the ratatouille replaced it. Because, <laughs> dude, it, it was, I, I was like, just, it just tasted like dog shit. It's, <laughs> I, I did a quick Google here. It says it is one of the few vegetarian MREs. Oh, see, and was. so was the veggie omelet. Maybe that's. That's part of it. Not Maybe having meat in the, yeah. I think yeah. they just connected the dots right there. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Overrated as fuck. Overrated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> Occasionally there's a few things in there, like certain ones be like, Oh, that's the one with the peanut butter or like the, you know, like a couple of them had a couple edible parts to it. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah. Um, like, we, like we that have one those, has peanut M and M's in it, you know. What was the one? There was that little, is that is that little bar? It was like a little power bar. It was yeah, like bad. the Hua bar or Hua Hua bar or whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Those were those are those are great. <laughs> those yeah. are awesome. One was a green apple. That was a good one. Yeah, yeah. Stay. It was really. It was like tacky. It was really hard <laughs> yeah. to do. It lasted a while. Yeah, it takes you a while just to get it down. You need like a gallon of water just to get through it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hydrate or die, right? <laughs> yeah, that's hydrate. <laughs> uh so overrated mres yes. yes uh good news it looks like you passed overrated underrated so awesome add that uh on your trophy case next to like the picture of the 1400 pound bench Fuck yeah. <laughs> love it uh no that's awesome no that kind of is most what we want to talk about i would mention uh i listened to quite a f- few of your podcast episodes leading up to this and i thought that's great uh uh your i uh, most of the episodes you were basically, I think you called it benching and bullshitting or whatever it was. It's just you talking about your training for the week and what you got, got going on, and you got live listeners asking questions. I think mm-hmm. they're, I think it's great. So anyone that wants to know more about you, that'd be like, uh, just from my perspective, I got to learn quite a bit uh, by listening to some of those. So I would send people Thank that you. way. Yeah. So that that I listen to that on Apple Podcasts or whatever, but I imagine people can check that out uh, wherever they want to. What about YouTube? Do you post much on YouTube? then too should people check that out yep so i got a youtube channel it's just jimmy kolb on youtube um and with the benching and bullshitting i go live on both platforms instagram and youtube at the same time uh it, for the longest time it was sundays at 8 p.m eastern standard but it, i had to move it because i'm trading some training changes so it's actually mondays at 8 p.m eastern standard time so i go live both youtube instagram i talk about the training for the week uh things that are goings ons stuff like that then i get into the subject matter of just answering questions talking about what they want to talk about uh, you can add, ask questions on youtube ask questions on instagram and i try to get to everybody i know the, the feed tends to scroll on instagram pretty fast but i try to stop it and answer as many questions as possible um, as long as you're not being a weirdo uh, I'll, I'll answer your <laughs> questions but at uh, least not the wrong kind of weirdo it better be good if you're gonna be a weirdo it better be good <laughs> yeah correct correct you know yeah yeah uh what about, I guess you're sponsored by Anderson Powerlifting, obviously, here. Uh, what uh, Do you have a code through there that people should be using if they're buying anything from there? I do. Uh, if you go to andersonpowerlifting.com, my Instagram handle, which is the Kolb Strong, so K-O-L-B, S-T-R-O-N-G, uh, that's a 10% discount for the customer. Again, that's that. not a commission thing for me. It's just a 10% discount for uh, the buying customer. It works on everything in the store except for the F8 Sportcraft bench bar. That's the only thing the code will not work for. It's the most expensive item in the shop. Everything else is good to go. 10% off with Culp Strong. Right on. Well, awesome. We uh we really appreciate having you on. I yeah, think this, this is really is, good. This is awesome. Uh this is uh I think people really enjoy this. So this is cool. Appreciate that. Thanks for having me on, guys. I'll I'll just leave one more plug. Uh, if anybody wants to see what I do training full time, I have a Patreon, which is $10 a month. Again, that's just Culp Strong on Patreon. Uh, all the behind the scenes stuff that I do in the gym five days a week to lead to these big benches uh, is on Patreon. Again, you can subscribe for 10 bucks a month or YouTube members is also $10 a month for the exact same content. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Good, Good stuff. stuff. Thanks, Jimmy. Yeah. Thanks, Jimmy. Appreciate you. All right. See ya. See ya. See you guys. Cool.
Yeah, yeah. Gave him the double double Jimmy cool beans there, didn't you? Yeah, that was uh, Tanner. You know, that was a lot of sets and reps talk for us, but I I enjoyed that sets and rep talk. So a lot of time, I was thinking about that even while we were talking. A lot of times, I don't like to talk that much sets and re- sets and reps talk because it's the same shit. We've it, always well, it talked is. About. It is. Like it's yeah. Okay, you're doing some variation right. of periodization, and you right. to, like it's like yeah, I kind of get for the most part what's going on. But people like this are such an outlier that you want right. to know well, what the hell are they doing. Right. It is such an outlier and rare and weird and different. And, uh, it is, it's, it, I mean, just even from my perspective, it's a little more interesting because it's not. Mm-hmm. Oh, totally. To hear know. that, to get up to a single takes like two and a half hours. <laughs> that's insane. You know, <laughs> that is crazy. I mean, it totally makes sense, but at the same time, oh, it's yeah. insane. <laughs> yes. Right. Right. It's, it's, uh, I understand how you get there and why that is but just if you just think about it it is a little bit crazy yeah like if he said it took like less than an hour i'd been like that doesn't really How? make any sense How right, was that the case? right yeah. right yeah oh that's good stuff that was way more sets and rep talk than normal wasn't it it was but uh, yeah. i was i was liking every second of it now uh, every once in a while we pull out a little sets and rep talk just Keep to rem- just guessing. so everyone remembers this is this this is still a lifting podcast even though most of the time it's about nothing yeah yeah. Okay. Not a big MRE guy he was Jimmy. Mm, who would have thunk it? I always like any time we can get the bomblet a little more <laughs> airtime. The on. <laughs> I think the page I googled. I think it was that guy that ate the bomblet because it had the oh, picture yeah, yeah. of the ratatouille. It had it like on the black backdrop. Like I actually kind of want to watch. So does he have a ratatouille video? <laughs> he must. I he, just clicked. It was uh, a blog post. Clean, isn't it Clean Plate Club or is, is that, that just I a can't remember? That is that what it was called? I can't remember. Well, that's like one of his things, but I, that might not be the name of the channel. But I know, like he's. He calls it the Clean Plate yeah, Club, or like, I, that's like a. I would have never guessed in a million years you, I would find a video of a guy eating an MRE entertaining, but that vomit one is that was so YouTube. like I could that's almost. It's stuff. been a while. I could almost watch that again. Yeah. Like that that had me like. I would just think if you're in any branch of the military, that <laughs> you would find that video very. In- I have nothing to do with the military, and I and found it entertaining. Like, like yeah. so, I have no shared experience there. But I would think anyone yeah. that. Eight yeah, especially since I've been through it, it's yeah, just like, like oh, oh it's, yeah. so, it's nostalgia too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's like yeah, especially like the early, you know, the earlier two thousands, earlier to mid two thousands. Right, there. Yeah. right. <laughs> and it's like, oh, there it is. Look at it. It is. It's even more disgusting than I thought. And he agrees. <laughs> yeah. You know. And then he's eating the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Why is he doing that? <laughs> yes. You you had something in here about texting. <laughs> Yeah, I I kind of I actually had to think about this for a long time. It's always one of those things where I think, did I put that in there or did Tanner? Yeah, and I think what I was thinking about one day is how often, how often Tanner, do you just text your wife and just see what what are you doing? What's going on? <laughs> like, hey, well, what's up? <laughs> no, never. It's not like okay, that. Okay. Like, That's okay, because <laughs> here's the thing: like, me and my wife are in a never ending conversation. So we never, you never have to be like, Hey, how's it going? Or like, and you live together, right? Right. That's like, like there's, there are no formalities of like, uh, sup, you know, it's like, uh, like it's every, it can always be direct to the point because there's like, you know, like, so yeah, never in that way. Cause that's what I was thinking about. Like one, I work from home. So if my wife's not working, She's either here or running around town or doing she's at something. Work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah right, but right. like, yeah, it's, if she's not here, she's either running around town doing something or she's at work. Like, it's like, I know where yeah. she's at. So we don't really need to text and be like, hey, where are you? What's going on right now? <laughs> right. Like, that's not a thing. And then also the way her schedule works, like she's, there's not that many days of the actual month that she's working. So it's like, a, you know, we're yeah. usually, if we talk to each other, it's because we're we're one room apart. I just walked to the next yeah. room and talked to her. And I yeah. think, I think what made me think of it is like one day I looked and like, we hadn't texted each other for like, I think it was like 10 days or something. And I'm like, it seems like a very long time, but, yeah. but at the yeah, same yeah. time, like, well, but also, I mean, we've talked usually if we need to say something, like a lot of times we'll just have a quick phone call. Like, Hey, all right, that, you need to yes. pick up the kids at this time. I'm doing this. Like there's some, right. there's some critical information that needs to be exchanged <laughs> and a text, you know, sometimes it's okay. Maybe I miss it or, Something like that. Yeah. But, uh, it just made me laugh because you think like, oh, remember when you were dating and you're like, hey, what's going on? What are you up to? And it's like, yeah, those, no. those texts are gone. <laughs> no. And all, that is part of it, though, too, what you said, why we might text less is because my wife is one of the very short list of people 
that we will just call if we like, mm-hmm. you know, that it's like, no, no, just call like, cause, because we can have a 20 second phone call and there doesn't need to be any like prelude and no like, oh, and you guys are both and, busy. You know, it's so just it's like, like, yeah, it's just like, okay, gotta go. And yeah. then it's like, okay, you know, like, so yeah, we can have very short calls and there doesn't have to be any concern over like minor form, you know, like uh, pleasantries <laughs> like, on, you know, not that we're like rude to each other, yeah, but, but just like, like uh, the, the, the information just gets exchanged so much easier. Yes. Like this is mission critical yes. here. Like, give, yeah, give that's me the info. like, that's the thing. Like a lot of times, like there's kids. I mean, there's always kids stuff to yeah, like, it's where always somebody so have transactional. To be at this time? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Right. And it's like, somebody's coming over to work on the whatever. And we, you know, it's just like, it's all this t- time stuff of mm-hmm. like, no, I need to podcast tonight. And, um, that being said, I mean, we sure have, we have a lot of fun and like we do stuff that's not like that, but a lot of our daily communication when we're not with each other is that type of stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's like what, the necessity. I, so. I totally agree. And for me, like where the communication gets to be just more fun is like, Oh, okay. Uh, we're going to go to the bar for a little bit or something. It's like, yeah. now we can actually just talk. Yeah. Right. You know? That's what we do. Yeah. yeah you don't have like, to worry about oh, the, thank kids God the kids are in or bed interruptions can, uh, or yeah. Yeah, whatever. It's, uh, we actually have your own personal time now. Oh, when you have a bunch of kids and stuff, it's just sometimes even just like 10 minutes oh. of no kids around is the most rejuvenating thing to be like, <laughs> to be like literally just like 10, 15 minutes. And you like a lot of times we'll be like, oh yeah, we like each other. I forgot. Like it's <laughs> oh, yeah. when, uh, we also do have interests and hobbies. Yes. Don't we? <laughs> yes like, uh, whenever, when we're not being like ripped apart in 70 directions, it's like, oh yeah, it's fun when we get to just do stuff like, uh, uh-huh. that. that's why it's probably really important to do you know, to make sure to make time for that stuff. It's tough sometimes because you're really tired. It is. And that's uh, the, that's also the hard part of it is that sometimes you're almost always really tired. <laughs> I, I talked about this. We t- we said this on the podcast, or did I just have this conversation with people in person over the Lift Hard Live Easy Classic weekend? I'm sure it's not on the podcast, but I'm going to say it again because it still makes me really laugh when I think about it. Uh, I told someone like, I'm Bruce Banner, and st- but I'm oh. not always angry. It's like, <laughs> <I'm always tired. laughs> uh, it's like, that's my secret. I'm they're like, Tanner, how are you so tired so frequently? That's my secret. I'm always tired. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, sometimes I'm just tricking you into th- making you believe I'm yeah. not that tired. But even then, that's how tired yeah, I am. I'm still have like, I said that ex- exact shtick on the podcast um, before? I don't know I if you've said have, that exact but... one. No, we've definitely <laughs> talked multiple times about always being tired, though. <laughs> Uh, but the, that's my secret. <laughs> I'm always tired. <laughs> even if you think yeah. I'm not, yeah. even if you're like, wow, Tanner's really, uh, really seems, uh, into it today. I, I guarantee you, I am still tired deep yeah. down. If you got me in a, it, like laying down with the lights that's, off for that's about where five I minutes, always, I'd be That's sleeping. where I even trick myself though, is a lot of days I think, God, I am not tired at all today. <laughs> and then like, if I sit, you like, slow let's down, say, let's see. Yeah, yeah. So if I slow down for a minute. The the speed that my eyes can just well you've seen me before you say like uh, you how fast fall asleep like, real fast and uh, I've done that <laughs> it was actually a time not that long ago my, where my wife was getting mad at me because it'd be like the end of the day it's like five fifteen and the kids are home and I'm like sitting in a chair and they're like climbing on me playing with me and all of a sudden like my eyes are just closed like I don't even know it they're just closed and she's yeah. like okay either you're faking it or something seriously wrong with you and I'm like I'm not doing this on purpose I'm not yeah trying to fall asleep here but my I just close somehow. I don't know how it's going yeah. on, but yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is, uh, to some people, this will probably be weird or they'd be like, Oh, I would never do that. <laughs> and, uh, in my relationship with, with, uh, my wife, I have absolutely no problem with this. And like, I, I actually had her do it because it works. It works to my benefit. And many times, uh, she has, cause like with our son, we have it set up where we can see where his phone is at, Mm -hmm. you know? And she has that on her phone where she can see where I'm at on my phone, you know, like where my physical location is at all times. And like some people might be like, well, I don't want that. That's like an invasion of, uh, you know, my privacy or whatever. But like, it's also like a safety thing. Like if there's someone that I want to know, like where my phone is at all the time, like she can see it, Mm -hmm. you know, if I'm like, I don't know. I don't do dangerous shit, obviously, yeah. but I, I don't know, think that's like that, that weird. I mean, like now, especially like with how fine mine, all that works, like that's not that uncommon for people to have fine my turn probably, on. And, yeah, and, probably not. Like but, we, uh, we don't, we don't have that now, but I don't, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a day at some point when, especially with kids where you say, okay, yeah, let's the flip big, the switch it's like so a we can safety, see where you're yeah. at. 
Yeah. You know, especially in a, living in a bigger town, like let's see where you're at. And then at the same time, like, yeah, maybe you want to see where I'm at too. Like, I don't think that's that crazy of a right. thing for a family to have that. Like boyfriend right. and girlfriend. I think that's a little weird yeah. that you need, like that seems like yeah. there's trust issues right off the bat, but for like family members to want to know where you're at, I don't think that's that unusual. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what you would think is like maybe it's trust issues. In our situation, in my situation, it's the opposite. It's like there is so little trust issues that it's like, (laughs) by all means, you can know everything I'm doing because it – most of it's not fun yeah. to begin with. <laughs> yeah. It's incredibly boring. It yeah. goes between three locations <laughs> on, a, it's on, a, on an incredibly I, predictable schedule. <laughs> yes. yes, exactly. Yes. Uh, so, but I, I'd be curious. That seems like something that, uh, as we were thinking about it, I'm like, you know, certain things we talk about get people going in the Discord and they have their opinions <laughs> and stuff. Like, I could picture that being someone, something that people have their take on, whether that's something that they would do or not the location thing yeah yeah yeah. i could see people having a you know whether whether they yeah because i could definitely see how some people would be like oh i would never want uh my significant other Mm -hmm. to have that or maybe not maybe everyone would just be like no that seems normal i don't know i don't really know but to me it seems like not a (laughs) yeah i i don't think it is either i mean especially mine i mean my my dot is 98 percent of the time (laughs) Actually, right here. You're, this is yeah, where, so where it's actually I spend right my now. waking life, right here. You're like, why does this phone never move? <laughs> yeah, dude, there's a lot of days where my phone, when I go, to, I mean, this phone yeah. is two years old. Like, next month, this phone is two years old. There's a lot of days I go to bed, and my phone's out, like, 75% on a two. Yeah. It's, it's like I'm in front of a computer. Everything, right, it's just right, right. here. You, I don't you, even you, need my phone, you know? Oh, well, and I don't know. Maybe I don't say a lot of people. I'm just maybe thinking of my own experiences. I use my phone for everything. Yeah. Because I'm not at my... And I would do the same. I don't want my work computer to have all of my other right, stuff going on. Right. So, like, my phone is my computer, mm-hmm. realistically. Like, why well, am I at my uh, computer right now? And I have a computer that I'm at work all the time, but I don't use that. Even though I could for a lot of things, mm-hmm. it's just a good... Uh, yeah, I I always err on the side of caution on all of that stuff. It's That's why my batteries take really, re- as of late, it's really starting to take a ran- random dumps on me all of a sudden. It? Like it's, Yeah, it seems like it's... Uh, it can really just, I don't know. The batteries, like, they just have a lifespan on them. Yeah, and I it's think like I really these things put aren't mine unlimited. Th- what the hell? Right, <laughs> right. And I think I really put mine through the ringer sometimes yeah. where I, like, my phone will get hot sometimes yeah. with the thing I'm doing. And I've like, noticed when I'm that editing, once in a while. Editing is... video and stuff on it, it, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it like actually working, yeah. Things yeah, yeah I mean, it. it gets, yeah, it can get hot See, like where again, it's gotta be also burning just such a funny power. concept to me because if you told me yeah. edit a video on my phone it, i mean you might as well tell it like to a 60 year old because i'd be like i don't even know where to start here. right because right. it's just like me it's like nope just grab it on my computer do, 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 well, pop it in and go me, like it's it would take although the computer is obviously the better tool for that it would take me it takes me much longer to do that stuff on yeah. my computer because and it is it's second just nature what you're used to me to. on my yeah, phone it is just right. what you're used to like same thing although like, it's not the better tool it's just my but i mean really the tool is like the best tool is always just the one that you can get the job done. That's with, true, know? too. It's, it's the same thing like yourself. making memes. Yeah. Like if you told me to make right. a meme on my phone, I'd be like, uh, okay, let me go find an app, and I guess I'll start there. <laughs> like here, it's like, nope, Photoshop's going open. I got the template right here, oh. the font. Like it's like, boom, we're ready to go, baby. And that's where I'm the opposite. I'd be like, how do I even get that on my computer? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know I could do it. Yeah. And like, But it's just like, I don't, just the same way you're talking about the app. It's like, I don't, where do I even... Mm-hmm. It's just not what I normally like, do. Yeah, conceptually, so Conceptually, I, I know what I'm supposed to do, but as far as the steps, it's going to be a little <laughs> bit of trial and error that's going to go on here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Phones. Can't live with them. Can't live without them. Amen. Am I right or am I right? What's right. the newest? The 14? What is our phone? I was actually, my wife got a new phone and hers is like the 14 and I was like, this, I don't even know what our, mine this is. This is the 13. 14 okay. is the newest one. 15 allegedly is coming out next month. So okay. if you're in the market for so a phone are, right now, don't buy one. Uh, so when are you getting uh, a new one? Um, Will it be the 15 or? <laughs> I'll see. If they have I only s- get a new one. I know. You, I, I, know I just want to know when I get a new one. I know you one. do it when I do. Um, if they have yeah. some sweet trade-in deal, I will do the 15 because. How long have we had this one? This September. I can will be, say we because yeah. I just get mine right <laughs> after you get it's yours. our phones. Yeah. Uh, September <laughs> will be like two years. It was either September or October when we got them. Okay. Uh, that'll be it's two like years. It's almost like their Massonomics phones, yeah. although they're not yeah. really. But yeah. like, it's, that's like, a, it's like the company phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, if they have an awesome trading deal, like you can't not take advantage of those because they're right. too good. So if they have that, I will take advantage of it. Otherwise, I will probably chill for a little while because like I said, mine just gets used. It's, it's honestly... 
It's is there a, anything better about the 14 or going to be better about the 15? What's better? Um, camera's a little better. The screen's a little clearer. Yeah. Is that the, it? It's like that's just what it is every time. Camera will be better and yeah. screen should be a little better. And I mean, yeah, no, they, they get a strong. There's no much. They get the a better, wheel's not like getting reinvented. They get a better point. processor just, every year so yeah. they can do more things more efficiently, which means that the battery usually gets a little better too. Supposedly this year, the big rumor is it's going to get rid of lightning finally. and It'll have the USB-C port on the bottom. So you can start to kind of ditch lightning stuff, but. Oh, I don't like when they change that stuff. Yeah, well, lightning's ran its course. It's very, very old, yeah. but. Yeah, so yeah, it, that's one, but that's also been a rumor for like the last three years and it never happens. But uh, maybe they'll go back to that fat one, <laughs> the 30 pin. <laughs> yeah. And maybe they'll bring back those docks that you had to set it on to to play oh, your music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like every yeah. college house had those. Right, you, right. It's like, oh, you'd go there and everyone had their their dock, the 30 pin dock. You'd put so your phone on. You're saying if it's going to go to a new thing, we're going to need a new adapter for the gym iPad, iPods. Actually, in that case, yes. Yeah, you'd need another new dongle. Yeah. Or wait, that's only though if someone's going to use their phone. Right. And plug it in. A lot for of the, the iPods, Bluetooth we don't need it. Yeah. Everyone yeah. just Bluetooths their phone. Yeah. Usually. So for the iPads that, or iPods, that won't change, obviously. Yeah. That's yeah, no, what it is. They're still all good. I ordered some new stuff for the gym. Did you? I mean, maybe we can talk about it more when it comes in. I th- but this is, I thought this stuff was kind of interesting. I did order, uh, like three or four new gym belts. Okay, I saw you write. Finally. I saw yeah. you write that in the Discord. Yeah, I was yeah. very curious. What what did you get there? Just a lot of people been using the gym belts, and I'm like, well, uh, it's like why? There's no point in even having your own belt when the gym has there all really the, isn't all the sizes, yeah. all the varieties, all the that's materials. And that's my thing. I just want to get all. Like now at this point, I'm just like, no, I'll just I'll just fucking get every single one of them, and then yeah. all of a sudden it's like, what? I mean, you can buy your own still, but yeah. And some people like uh, to have their own shit, and yeah. I get that. But. And I just use the gym belts. I mean, they technically are mine. But, but they get like, broken in, a, too. Yeah. Like, they are I know, better. That's I like them. Like, yeah, I honestly, when I left, you know, I had a single, or I had a, a lever somewhere that somehow yeah. got lost. Probably the only item to actually get lost in the gym ever. I, I still yeah. think it was an honest mistake. Someone probably grabbed the wrong one. I would guess. I just can't Cause picture there Because there take. is one that's there. It's just too small. So I really do right. think someone probably took that one. Took the wrong one and didn't realize it. Um, But... Like that, the, the, was it the uh, 10 millimeter? Is that the sizes? There's 10 and 13 for yeah, the belts. Yeah. The 10 millimeter, yeah. like solid leather one. That thing was That's, broken in to yeah. perfection. It felt so damn good. That thing was yeah. amazing. But then I did get the, you know, moving away. I had to get my own belt again. I got the suede. Yeah. Well, the suede kind of already is broken in compared to the solid right. leather. So. Again, and that's what I bought, uh, like four more of the pioneer cut. Cause I do really yep. like the, it's pioneer the best. Cut. It is the best. Uh, and actually going back to the regular single prong after the pioneer cut, I'm like, Ooh, I don't like how far apart these holes yeah. are. The, you know? the pioneer cut is just the way to go. It's I, I yeah. couldn't imagine not going with that now. No. So what did uh, you so just I get it in a few different little... sizes or? Yeah. I just ordered the same thing in like four sizes. So what'd you get for sizes? I'm curious there. So actually I talked to Matt about it cause it's interesting. So you're talking about the black one when you said the 10 millimeter leather one. Yep, at the I gym. got, I got uh, an, or, well, when I talk about the one at the gym, the gym is, oh yeah, the all leather one. The one I ordered was the, the 10, brown one or the black one. I'm though? telling you the leather, the brown leather, raw leather, like solid piece of leather. Yeah. So those were only like seven and a half. Those brown ones at the gym. Really? What those, yeah. Those were thinner. The, there's a black one that they considered a 10 um, that, that we have at the when gym. When you say black, le- you're still saying leather though, right? Black leather, okay. not suede. Yeah. Yeah. There's a black black leather one at the gym that's not suede well that's a gym but belt. was this the thing though was it is it the suede ones are like seven and a half but then the millimeter on each the let the, the suede on each there's end some, brings it to 10 i'll be honest it's a little confusing because i even had because there's this black one at the gym that i really liked and i want in the pioneer cut is that and the I'm one like, with I want, pioneer embossed on the back yeah, yeah yeah pioneers embossed on the back and i'm like i want that one in every size because that was a stock belt mm-hmm and, they don't and that do was that advertised anymore, as a 10 millimeter leather non-suede stock belt. They no longer have a 10 millimeter leather stock belt. They have a 10 millimeter stock suede, suede belt. Yeah, which is what I got. But the suede is, the 10 millimeter suede is way more, you could go it like this. It's way looser, yes. Like it does, yeah. compared to the leather ones, it it arrives feeling very broken in. Right. Which I, which I is think a, is great. I like That's it. what I was going to say. Not It depends whether you think it... It's different whether you think that is good or bad, yeah. depending on what you like. But I just really liked this one, so I want that mm-hmm. one. 
well, you really can't get that one. Mm. And it is funny. The suede one is the same thickness, but it's just the difference in materials. It's not a thickness. It's the material difference of making it. But anyways, he showed me this other one I get. And it's actually advertised as a 13 millimeter, but he said because of the difference in materials, it'll feel like just like that okay. 10 millimeter one that you have. So that's what I ordered. And then, but it won't have pioneer embossed on the back then, will it? It does. Oh, it does. No, it, it'll oh, okay. basically look just like that one that okay. I like. It's all, although this one's advertised as a 13, but he says it'll feel because of the material change that they've had over that point in time, it'll feel what just like what that one okay. I think is a 10. Because 13 which that's really kinda, is a chunky boy. Like when you, yeah, because we have some ones, 13s that are like the brown, all solid those leather. Are, those are, those like are too stiff. much. I don't, I yeah. don't think that is the right belt anymore. It's those, those if you're are, do a those lever, are I could see that, but right. Yeah, that's right. a lot of belt. Um, even the suede ones, like Ross has a red suede that's mm-hmm. like considered a 10 millimeter. His is so much stiffer than like that 10 millimeter really? suede okay, that so you have. So they have changed some stuff then over the there's years. There's differences. Like there, it is not, you, it's not like, there's definitely differences. I can look at the belts and be like, these look like the same thickness. They feel so much different. Mm. Like that 10 millimeter suede one that you can come that you get, they can ship it in like oh, yeah. where it's like coiled yeah, like it that. It rolls up like, I don't know, a little bigger than a soup can. Like, it's, yeah, it rolls and up like, tight. Uh, Mount Rossmore's, if you rolled his up, it would freaking uncoil, it would whap you in the face like a coiled spring if it was tight. You know, it yeah. like, uh, there's just no way. Hmm. So, I, I just think it's interesting the differences like that. But I ordered that what's actually called the 13 and then I'll probably later order like three or four of the suede ones though. Okay. So what's that? Okay. So you went with all black on all of those. Yeah. And what, and I would get all black on the suede did you get through then? Uh, I actually got, they're big, like a large pioneer. Oh, it's enormous. Yeah. Fit, I shouldn't say it's like, enormous. I'm on but. like, but I'm not a small guy and I'm on like one of the smaller settings on yeah, the large. I'm actually pioneer. trying to remember now if I got a medium or a large. Like you would be a medium, is okay. Then I must I have got a medium. Have yeah, yes, because yeah. the one at the gym was a large, and I was always yeah. on like the very first one. I'm like, right. if I lose any weight, I can't even use this belt anymore. So yes, so, I got a medium, and I'm like right yeah. in the middle of it. And so I this weigh, one, I weigh 210 pounds. And that's right. a medium, you know. <laughs> right. So this one, I all have small through XL. Which XL, you'd have to be a big dude to yeah. use the XL, honestly. I'm curious. Okay, um, so small. Like, do some of the girls in the gym, would that be the size for them? I don't even know who will really wear that. Medium, actually, actually medium would cover, like, 80% of the yeah. people that come in there, to tell you the truth. But, because uh, I can technically wear a medium. Like, large mm-hmm. is probably the good, uh, right size for me, but yeah. I can also wear most of the mediums. Um, but then I think I'll go back and get those suede ones eventually, mm-hmm. too. Mm-hmm. You know, and just some point just people will be like i don't even know why i have a belt and that's <laughs> yeah. what I, that's just what i want it to at be some like point, but, i think they should yeah. i think they're kind of at that point now when those yeah. when those ones show up and then the uh other thing do we got it well maybe i should save that for next episode Ooh, cliff I'll, I'll save the other thing is it a piece of episode. equipment can i at least know that well <laughs> not really it's more of a should i talk about it or should we save it um i don't know your call <laughs> I guess it'll just take two minutes. So okay. I thought th- I thought that about the belts though. So uh, I got a uh, wall control, which you oh, can, like the fancy it, wall but, systems. Yeah, it's the uh, powder coated metal wall systems mm-hmm. with. Uh, That's what they are. They're, they're and, powder coated metal. I never actually knew what those. Yeah, were. they're powder coated metal, and then the hooks are. So I got all red mm. uh, sheets, and then the attachments I got are also red. Ooh, and so the pegboard's going away. Is this the, the pegboard pegboard's going away, and it's all going to the red. Uh, and I'm going to do more of it. I'm going to cover yeah. more area with it because really I think it's really going to look cool. It's called wall cool. control is what the brand is. Yeah, wall control. I got to see I bought these things in quite a bit like, of it. Do they it actually and, market them to lifters or is that just... <clears throat> I think the biggest thing I oh, think is these garage are just like uh, just tool storage. Wall storage, aren't they? Right, yeah. It's like the probably the number one application is uh, garage walls and... That sort of thing. Oh, oh, Tanner, Tanner, you got to back up like a second. You were frozen oh, for no, a I, long time there. Okay. <clears throat> I, no, asked pro- you, pro- <clears throat> I asked you if these were marketed to lifters of the general population, and I'm on their website. I answered my own question. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's pictures of it just in people's garages. Yeah, garages, I bet, is the <clears throat> number one application. Mm-hmm. But we'll see. I, I ordered like a variety pack of several different types of hooks and things too, so I can see what I like there, so then I can go back and order more once I've 
find the attachments that I think are good. The stuff is not cheap for as much of it as I'm buying. Yeah. But, so were uh, you buying? Okay, were you buying these in like these thirty-two by thirty-two pieces? Yeah, usually like if it says thirty-two by thirty-two, at least for the red powder coated, you actually the biggest piece is like sixteen by thirty-two. So you put like a sixteen by thirty-two next uh, to a sixteen by thirty-two. Okay. Like the two pack is the uh. Good deal. So, you know, I've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, like 12 of those coming. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And um, then we'll see how that goes. Once I get those up, I'll see what more attachments I need. And then if it goes well, then I'll buy even. I've got a few other places that I'll put a few more just to kind of clean things. Like if yeah. I can really get and a lot they of look shit hung cool up. too. Yeah. they And that's the other thing. Like now it looks, now I can do it and it looks cool. It fits the vibe. Okay. And so you got like 10 of those things you said? I think 12. That's actually not that yeah. bad. I'm looking. These like 30 bucks a piece ish or shipping get kind of crazy. No, it's free shipping. If oh. you order over a certain dollar that's really, amount to me though, to get yeah. all that stuff organized for like 300 and some bucks. Like that's really not that's, that much. I, I basically in this first order, I dropped like 400 bucks on it. Yeah. You know, I don't I think, think that's that crazy. And it looks really no. good. I always it thought this was really like a, good. I always thought this was like a lifting specific thing. I didn't realize it was just done. No, I mean that all the lifters have. It, yeah. That, we should probably get that. a, uh, all, now that I think about it, I should probably have them make us an affiliate uh, link for it. So, because I could do a video on uh, do they changing do they do the, that? Like they'll make affiliate. Yeah, oh, they, they do. Real, every, every every everybody has one. Okay. Yeah. Well, God. Now people can finally get strong, right? That's I think that's what's been holding us back. Honestly, yeah. yeah the attachments are just back. a mess everywhere on pegboards. Yeah. Yes. Not for long. All right. Well, I'm excited to see those things. Uh, so will they go in that one spot? Were they going in multiple spots or just like that spot where they were at kind of already? Yeah, I'm going to put it in the two main spots where pegboard is now, you know, so it's like behind the cable crossover. Yep. That'll be the big section. And, and then I'm going to run it long where where the grippers are at now underneath mm -hmm. that mirror. I'm going to run that longer mm. so I can just put more stuff there. And then I'm going to put uh, behind the lat pull down yeah. where there's pegboard there. I'm making a bigger section of pegboard there. And then if that all goes good, what I actually might do where all the belts hang up in the other side of the gym, oh. I might just make that all wall a control. Wall. That'd be pretty And cool. then just hang sh shit everywhere. Instead yeah. of having, let's say, like four or five hooks there right now. Yeah, there's just some hooks. I might yeah. just make a wall control wall there, and then it's like... That'd can, be pretty cool. Then hang belts and configure that like in a number of different ways, you yeah. know? Yeah be like guns that there's like two holders for each one for it to lay horizontally <laughs> yes yes sweet well i'm excited to see this is playing out great for when we do the next gym tour in like seven months you know got gotta keep buying stuff for the gym yep. so that way there's new things to show off gotta there. keep progressing yeah otherwise the gym tour video gets stale and it's i think i've only done like six gym tour videos this year so <laughs> gotta... you have done a lot haven't you <laughs> yeah oh and, so, and, yeah. and also along those lines um the YouTube, we had a surprise YouTube video this week. We had yes. official, um, not Massonomics, but official meat photo video man, Nick Duraney himself. Uh, he put together his highlight reel of the Lift Hard Live Easy Classic. And man, that thing's a banger. If you haven't seen that, you need to go check that out. We, we just released that today on Tuesday. So this week, I watched it like four times. I did too. It's only a couple minutes long. Yeah, it just kept, makes it like, ah, so well, fun. Might as well play this again. Yeah, play yeah. it back. Uh, so <laughs> I could watch it right now, even though I've seen it five times. Never gets old. Um, so that came out on Tuesday, and we still get to have our regular podcast drop this Thursday. Or sorry, our regular YouTube drop this Thursday. So this week, you got YouTube video on Sunday, surprise release on Tuesday, another release on Thursday. This is a this is a crazy week for content, isn't it? Yeah, this week is going to be the uh, breakfast one is going to come out finally mm -hmm. after long anticipated uh, my eleven hundred calorie breakfast that I've eaten every day, approximately for the last ten years. Approximately every day, approximately for the last ten years, which adds up to a lot of breakfast. Yeah, that's. I'm getting hungry. It's almost breakfast time <laughs> for the next day. Mouth is watering just thinking yeah, about all it. This, all this talking <laughs> gotta, about that breakfast. Shut this excited. down. Tanner's drooling yeah. over his microphone over here. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we probably should bring it in for a landing though. And I would uh, talked about it at the beginning of the episode. Now is the time to go to Barefoot and uh, get the Ersonomics collab shoe. It doesn't come with all the stack of two two dollar bills like I've got right here, but uh, it does come with this. Massonomics logo and the MSS NMX across the back and the combination of suede and canvas as never 
before seen by a barefoot shoe. And they've never quite done a two-tone like this that the, that we did with them either. And no, it wasn't until not. us. Uh, they broke the mold with us, didn't they? Mm-hmm. We're all about pushing boundaries. So check that out. Snag them while they're hot. And then uh, snag the Masonic stuff I did in the Discord. I talked about our hats today. Uh, we're going to rotate out some hats. So if you want in on like a leather patch hats like this, you're probably already too late. But uh, if you do want one, now might be your final chance to get in on it. Or if you even want like a dad hat like this, like we call it with the buckle back. Mm-hmm. You're probably almost too late for that too, but check it out. And drink spotter, drink spotter light, all our teas. We have uh, something coming later this month too, but that won't be for a little bit yet. So more to come on that later. Big, Big things, things coming. coming. Like Big always. things coming. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube. If I could tell you to go one place uh, that you're not subscribing right now, my big ask would be to go subscribe on YouTube. We got to get those numbers up. Those are rookie numbers. And then uh, want to make sure to tell you about uh, Juggernaut AI. It's the training that uh, Tommy and I both use. Juggernaut Training System is the leader in strength having helped thousands of athletes from beginners to world champions maximize their results and reach their goals. They deliver principle-based coaching through cutting-edge technology to help lifters get the best results of their life. Got a bunch of lifters in Massonomics Gym. Just finished up the Lift Hard, Leave Easy Classic. They peaked for that with Juggernaut AI. And now a lot of times after a meet, you, you're in this phase. You're like, what the hell do I even do right now? I just finished that. I hit my goals. Bridge block. I did what I did. Now And then <laughs> got a bunch of people at the gym that are on the bridge block. And actually quite a few people that have even uh, switched to the power building program to try that for a while. Try something different. And um, see how that goes. You know, they'll probably stick with that for a while. And then they get a wild hair, they'll probably switch back over to powerlifting or eventually get out of that four- or six-week bridge block and get back into some hypertrophy training. But point being that you don't have to be confused. You don't have to be in this gray space where you don't know what the hell you're doing. Uh, use Juggernaut AI, and it's going to help you get through that tricky post-meet, those post-meet blues, help you get through that. Juggernaut AI dot app. That's where you go on your web browser. That's where you can get signed up and make sure to use discount code Massonomics. It'll save you 10% for the lifetime of that met membership. Juggernautai.app. And this episode is also brought to you by SwissLink. In 1995, Maurice Big Mo Huffman founded SwissLink with the mission to bring authentic Swiss Army goods to the United States and into the hands of those yearning for quality gear at uncompromised prices. Now for nearly three decades, Big Mo has been traveling far and wide in search of the best items from military forces around the world. Big Mo doesn't only find authentic military clothing for Swiss Link. He brings in everything you can imagine from Swiss military rangefinders to Italian police tracksuits. SwissLink.com is also home to the Swiss Link Classic Wool Blankets. They're an ideal mix of 80% wool and 20% recycled fibers. It's that special blend that provides a soft, luxurious feel while maintaining all the benefits of wool. The designs are reminiscent of brands that rhyme with Schwendelton and Schwudson Bay, but are available at only a fraction of the cost. Swiss Link's exceptional collection and dedication to quality customer service distinguishes them from the competition. Enjoy a 15% discount on your next purchase at SwissLink.com by entering code MASS, that's M-A-S-S, at checkout. Code MASS will save you 15% at SwissLink.com. Thank you, SwissLink. Thanks, SwissLink. Get a blanket or two. I love coming home to a SwissLink blanket. Mm-hmm. I can also pitch a tent with SwissLink. <laughs> See, they got tents on there. All right. Uh, Tommy, where do they find you at? You can find me at Tomahawk underscore D. You can follow me at Tanner underscore Baird, but for the love of God... Just make sure to follow Massonomics at Massonomics. See you.